गुड मॉर्निंग सर हाय सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर इस शेल वी स्टार्ट द सेशन सर या या यस वी कैन ओके सर ओके सर वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू रेस्पेक्टेड प्रिंसिपल मैडम हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू रेस्पेक्टेड प्रिंसिपल मैडम वेरी गुड Very good morning to respected principal madam Dr K Padmalata convener of this two days national webinar and two days resource persons Dr A Sai Balaji Garu Mr Karthikeyan Reddy Garu Mr A Jayram Reddy Garu and my dear colleagues faculty members and students and other faculty members and students from other college myself dr s venkateswar rao iqac coordinator on behalf of faculty members and iqac vijaya institute of pharmaceutical sciences for women it's my pleasure to welcome you all to this national webinar on recent horizons in experimental pharmacology and molecular biology hosting by department of pharmacology and department of pharmacognosy we all are honored and delighted to host this national webinar we have more than 300 delegates from our college and other colleges we all are proud to have you all in this national webinar the main objective of this national mm -hmm. webinar is to encourage the students and faculty mm -hmm. to participate in experimental pharmacological mm -hmm. research to reach this objective mm -hmm. yesterday dr c sabarinath sir scientist iict delivered a lecture on mechanism and molecular techniques of inflammation and associated disorders and dr s tripathi mm -hmm. assistant professor department of pharmacology shiksha o anusandhan mm -hmm. university bhuvaneswar orissa delivered a talk on screening of drugs acting on central nervous system and dr gyam wani garu professor department of pharmacognosy vijaya institute of pharmaceutical sciences for women delivered a lecture on trends in molecular biology and today we have dr a sai balaji garu mr kartikeya reddy garu mr a jayram reddy garu as a resource persons and they given opportunity to share their knowledge on cancer physiology molecular pharma pharmacology of anti cancer drugs role of pharmacovigilance and its future prospect and alternative to the animal toxicity testing we all are happy to have you as a today's resource person and thank you sir for accepting our invitation and active participation in this national webinar thank you all for given me this opportunity now i request mrs s yes, archana madam assistant professor department of pharmaceutical analysis to introduce our resource person dr a sai balaji garu mamma jeppu nachukona naaku meer mamma jare na kuda Good morning, everyone. I am Archana, working as associate professor in Vijaya Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences for Women, 
from the Department of Pharmaceutical Analysis. It's my privilege to introduce the profile of today's speaker, Dr. A. Sai Balaji Garu, MPharm Pharmacology, PhD in Cancer Biology. Sir, currently working as a scientist in Department of Applied Biology from the organization of CSIR, Indian Institute of Chemical Technology. Sir, experienced drug discovery and development scientist with a proven track record of therapeutic innovation across multiple decrease, disease areas. Sir, academic qualifications. Sir, completed his bachelor in pharmacy from Aga, Acharya Nagarjuna University in the year of 2009. Sir, completed his master's in pharmacy from Manipal University in the year 2011. Sir, awarded PhD from Manipal University in the year 2016. Sir, worked as senior scientist from 2016 to 2018 at Strand Life Sciences and continued scientist to N Origin Drug Discovery 2018 to 2019. Currently, sir, working as scientist C at CSIR IICT Hyderabad. For his excellence, sir, received many academic awards and achievements. Sir, received CSIR IICT Young Scientist Award in 2022. Sir, achieved Young Scientist of Telangana Academy of Sciences from the year 2021 in the field of medical health and pharmaceutical sciences. Sir secured Best National Seminar Award IPA in 2015. Sir gained Prime Minister's Fellowship Award for PhD 2012. Sir received MPharm Best Thesis Award National Level in 2011. He secured first place in Bachelor's and Master's. <laughs> Sir received grants in SCRB, CSIR grants, CSIR grant on COVID-19. Sir received industrial sponsored projects. Sir has four patents. Sir, under the guidance of the sir, three PhD students are pursuing their PhD. Up to now, sir has 40 international journals, average impact factor of six. We are very grateful, grateful and happy to have you, sir. Thank you, sir. Please continue with your session. Thank you, madam. You have given a lot of uh, introduction. So thank you, sir. And especially thanks to uh, uh, Jairam Reddy, sir. He is uh, my uh, bachelor's time. He is uh, our lecturer in uh, for pharmacology. And a special thanks to um, principal, madam. She has given this opportunity to uh, showcase either my work or related to my topic. So coming to the topic, actually, I wanted to give uh, the general topic uh, to disable personal screen share. Sir, somebody has to allow me for screen sharing. Yeah, sir. I have give, already I have given multiple sharing options, sir. You can share the PPT, sir. But it is saying host to disabled participant screen sharing. Host to disabled. That means you disabled. It has to be enabled now. Ah, yeah, sir. Now yeah, sir. Now we can share yeah. the PPT. You are able to see, sir? Yes, yeah, sir. Visible, sir. So, yeah, basically, uh, what I'm going to give topic is chemotherapy. Is uh, Chemotherapy is there maybe in the uh, fourth B farm. Uh, definitely, if M farm students are presented, it will be useful for pharmacology. It is uh, not only like that, whether it is B farm fourth year or M farm pharmacology, as a pharmacal, uh, pharmacy graduate, we should know a few things, definitely drug classifications and what are the drugs acting on uh, different diseases. Uh, if somebody asks, you are doing uh, pharmacy, so do you know what is this drug? So that means uh, till overall our life, we should know all the drug names and at least their uh, mechanisms where they act it. So anyhow, I cannot cover all the things. So anyhow, it is there in your curriculum, you will read it. But I am going to emphasize majorly on cancer and uh, how the physiology, like how cancer is uh, different from other disorders. Similarly, what is the mechanism of action of these drugs? So I had kept left side uh, some diagrams. So those indicates that uh, each one having it uh, one one role. So I'll explain. 
i wanted to tell to students or any faculty members if they have any doubt you can uh, ask then and there otherwise you have to write and ask it anything is okay be friendly so don't think uh, you feel like i am also one of you uh, senior student of you your college feel like that then you can ask so don't think see csr scientist doesn't have any uh, hands so definitely is uh, going to be like your uh, lecturer or your friend so you ask anything i'll uh, answer to you back so i just put the crab image first so the crab image is tells that uh, uh, hippocrates his name he named the the disease that time there was no proper uh, diagnosis and proper names but the seeing the spread of cancer from one place to other place so crab has a different hands but one origin is there it is going to spread it so they called a carcumes that name derived from the crab that's why i put that image then second image if you see second image there are cell uh, cells are there there are different apoptotic necrotic cells so when cancer is there the cell structure especially for the lymphoma and blood cancer the cell structures will change and mode of growth they change from one place to another place and the sequencing if you do sequencing you will know what is the reasons and spreading of cancer and there is a bcr abl mutations finally drugs image i have kept so these are all indicates that uh, is going to all these are there in the cancer studies so we have to read it so now I'll, i actually wanted to tell is how cancer is different from other disorders so everyone either in movies or in real life people think okay cancer means oh it is going to be end life but why people are feeling that is going to be end life when person get diabetes people won't fear that much okay we got diabetes so we have to take lifetime drugs or if they get a uh, blood pressure we have to going to be take a lifetime uh, blood pressure but still if you do uh, dietary and exercise you can dissolve both of them but still majorly people will depend on uh, oral hypoglycemic or insulin for diabetes or uh, anti hypertensive drug for this can uh, hypertension but in cancer people will fear first so that fear itself will give a lot of advantage to the cells psychologically we are going to be depressed why people depress but they don't know the reason but still they depress it so as a pharmaca pharmacy person if you know few things you can tell that this is also is a disease but there is a lot of uh, curable options how to cure we can tell but we should know what is the difference compared to this disease and other disease so coming to what is cells cells plays a major role and cancer is coming from our cells only so that means we should know what is cell then characteristics of cancer and treatment modalities what kind of treatments you will going to, you are going to read in your uh, either uh, kd tripathi book or rangandale or goodman gilman you are going to read only chemotherapy you are not going to read immunotherapy or radiotherapy anything that is not there uh, but there are different options so screening so uh, if you people want to identify some drugs how to identify uh, because today or tomorrow you will do m pharm or you will finish m pharm and go for uh, either industry or academics again but how to screen it so you should know minimum few basics so on drug discovery what is our role as a pharmacologist because it is always underrated uh, in india or many places pharmacy but it is not like that if you are in a correct position it is actually overrated only few times so you can able to enter in any field if you have a pharmacy degree but we should know how to enter and where is the opportunity so that's why i put career opportunities uh, because even when i was doing b pharm i know only okay i have to do m pharm i was not knowing anything but uh, in m pharm time i moved to manipal university it is a kind of uh, lot of exposure then i went to indian institute of science uh, which is in bangalore for phd and uh, that is the actually india's uh, highest ranked institute for the science so there i got on a different opportunities uh, and we can explore it but if i would have known it before either in my b pharm i would have actually moved little faster but i was not knowing that's why at least i wanted to tell to 
uh, pharma friends so so at least you people will uh, take any one of you take advantage also it is going to be good so we'll go to topic so cancer versus other disorders like uh, uh, how cancer is uh, differ from the other disorders so if you see this image if you fall in from your scooter that means nobody is hurt you. you you your driving only is not good that's why you are fallen it that means cancer is like that depends on our uh, behavior or our fate because our cells only con converting into cancer cell by mutagenesis mutations exposed to either uv radiation or taking a tobacco or taking a gutka or a hormone imbalance so that means we are majorly involved but if you see come to other side right side cardiovascular disorder neurological any other diseases somebody is going to hit us like car is hitting the bike or bike is hitting the car so that means uh, there here different uh, cardiovascular that means fat is there high fat is leading to cardiovascular disorders because uh, high fat accumulation your uh, blood vessels going to be a loss of their construction and uh, vasodilation and lung and liver like example sars cov 2 when sars cov 2 comes many people uh, died because it is a foreign material so something is coming and affecting as bacteria virus or uh, anything but here is a different so here mutations here is something bacteria virus and food extra so since uh, the functional unit of the body is called cell actually so our body is made up of cells uh, 1 into 10 to the power of 14 uh, cells that means some billion cells we have and their role is uh, actually um, marvelous whatever we have a gadget of our phone is only few options maximum you can load some hundred apps you can see few things but what is our body is very complex it is going to do uh, miracles but if you use properly so that means these are all is happening because of cells but there are different kind of cells in our body so cells are actually basic building of our living things so red blood cells different columnar epithelial cells our uh, ovum cells and uh, sperm cells is going to give a baby i mean next generation and uh, smooth muscle cells our muscles bone cells is going to give strength to body nerve cells whatever we are thinking writing is dependent because of neurons only so these different types then what is there in the cell okay. cell has a dna which is very important for genetic material and uh, it, dna is enveloped with a uh, nuclear and nu uh, nucleus and the, in that it has a chromosomes so yesterday my colleague would have told a few things so about cell and dna i guess you understood i know pharma uh, doesn't cover uh, basic biology but you people have a google everything in mobile you can read it it is important uh, if you want a bright future, you have to read it. That's all. So, like endoplasmic reticulum and smooth, uh, mitochondria, cytoplasm, Galia operators, these are different. Galia, uh, mitochondria is uh, energy source for us because we become tired, but we need energy. Mitochondria is only going to give. So, like that, we have different things. So, in M form, there will be a cell biology one part. You can read it there. But if you have a knowledge in B form itself, is going to good. I did a diploma in pharmacy. That time only I used to read actually uh, in pharmacology good books like uh, Tripathi or uh, um, Satoshkar book and Goodman Gilman. I used to read it because I love pharmacology more. So, but you people also, whichever you like, whether if you like Sutix, you read Sutix books only, but read it. So, come to uh, cell structure and uh, their characteristics. So, how normal cell human cell structure and normal cell development when it will become a cancerous so normal uh, as i told it will have a 37 to 100 trillion cells we are having in a healthy adult 242 billion cells are produced every day by replacing the old cells if you see hair follicles they come and go our skin which is the largest organ in our body is the skin uh, every day our skin sheds a lot of cells. Maybe you will not able to see to it, but it will be there. Dust is that only on your bed if you get up. 
so which, uh, they die in a natural process because new cells has to come old cells has to go out if the cells did not go out if they are patching on our skin that is called psoriasis there is inflammatory disorder so each of the cell follows a cell cycle this maintain internal balance which keeps us healthy so they maintain okay dna uh, 2n then we have to make it more dna which is 4n then there will be cell division i guess many of you are in bpc students so you will know cell cycle so cancer strikes when due to some unusual gene mutations when mutation happens this process altered and leading to the uh, stops following the instructions of genes so if you see this image normal cell genetic changes converts color and cancer cell division the division into two then it will become malignant it enormously growth but where normal cell will not grow like that see if you see in top normal cell it become two cells healthy cell it will be like this but there is no enormous growth but these will enormously they grow then cancer is defined as a group of disease why i will tell why group of diseases uh, that is called actually disorder what is disorder means is a group of disorders characterized by uncontrolled proliferation of cells because this cancer is not only affecting that place it will spread to other place and damage the other organs also that's why we call it as a group of so, disorders so cancer cells is basically it is a wrong behavior of cells so in each of if you see normal cell division one keep going to give another one one going to give another one. but damage happens no repair it will die but in cancer is not like that if damage is happens they will overcome circumvent this damage and start moving very fast they become aggressive like uh, if you see one dog and uh, if you if it is silently is there if you put a one stone on the dog if it goes like that it is a normal it reverses back and comes and bites us that is going to be cancer so similarly it happens so just uh, these cells taking over uh, and are putting a pressure on vital organs they grow much in breast cancer let's say they grow much and put a pressure on the uh, ribs which is below the heart and the lungs so they create a lot of pressure on it and if a colon cancer comes our stomach is only accommodate only some organs inside like small intestine large intestine uh, liver pancreas spleen these things but colon cancer comes that extra mass is there where it will put it will squeeze other organs and it is keep growing that's why we will have a lot of disturbances so how uh, global cancer incidences so how globally it is there uh like global cancer incidences is uh, uh 18.1 million new cancer cells uh, cancer cases every year that means you 1 million 1 million is equal to 10 lakhs so that means uh 1 crore 80 lakhs cases are reporting every year throughout the uh, world so in that even india is there we also get it because if you see asia here is the india uh, number of cases it is 87 lakhs 51000 so being a india is the largest uh, population definitely will cases will be more Ch we crossed china also so what top 10 cancers what males get and what females get the difference between males and females is going to be only reproductive system but depends on uh, if males uh, smokes more they will get more lung dis lung and oral cancers so uh, women's get majorly is a hormone imbalance which is a ovarian cancer and breast cancer so like uh, men's get lung cancer trachea and bronchitis colon or rectum liver esophagus naso uh, nasopharynx that is oral tongue oral cavity larynx these are all comes under oral only stomach women's is as i told different breast and cervical uterine colon and lung is again same then corpus uterine and ovary that is related to women reproductive system so like this women's and males some are common some are different accordingly their reproductive systems so yes what is some people say uh, are in movies are in uh, newspapers if you people have a habit of reading you will see somebody died with stage 2 cancer what is stage 2 why we are calling stages here 
in diabetes we are not calling stages in hypertension we are not calling stages there are diabetes but here we are calling because when stage 0 means it has been caught in situ and not at spread if you see one small yellow mark is there uh, here so cancer has come but it is not spread and it is not big also but stage 1 means where the cancer is still small and it has a not at spread so it is a little bigger than the stage 0 stage 2 means cancer has a still not spread but it has grown it is become a big in you know, uh, lungs stage 3 means the cancer has grown and spread to the lymph nodes of surrounding tissues that is called local metastasis so it is spreaded somewhat but in stage 4 also known as a metastatic or secondary cancers means it has a spread at least to other organ in the body like it went to uh, cervical it went to liver it went to lungs it went to different places so that is called stage 4 so stage 4 means is all organs is going to be affected so i will tell why if other organs get what is the problem so you can people can have a doubt our uh, you have mentioned our body is a complex and our body is uh, better than our uh, smartphone but we don't we have a rescue system in our body like outside police are there to stop any crime but in our body is not going to do any crime in our body yes it has immune system we have similarly we have called a tumor suppressors when tumor is wanted to grow there is a inhibitory system which can suppress it so if you see car is there and uh, if you apply the brakes if the brakes are good it won't hit anyone you can stop it uh, there won't be a matter with the accident but if the your brakes are not working what is going to happen it is going to hit someone or you will hit the wall or you hit the tree whatever it is so it is going to be accident same thing in our body tumor suppressor genes and active oncogenes when active oncogenes comes and stop the brakes in uh, stop the function of the brakes so no brakes it is going to be a uh, active oncogene so it is going to uh, going to be damage so what is our tumor suppressor oncogenes so what are the examples we have mentioned many what could be the examples so receptor tyrosine kinase and uh, egfr her2 these are oncogenes and cytoplasmic tyrosin sar abl and there is a braf hras these are all oncogenes tumor suppressors like apc braca1 and vhl so these are all called p53 and p retinoblastoma these are all called tumor suppressors if these functions are not there and these will take a over action and is going to be a cancer so how cancer uh, kills the Uh, cells kills the patients whatever firstly it is important to remember that not all cancer cause the death so overall 50 out of every this we should know because somebody says uh, we have a breast cancer it is not going to be a big problem uh, majorly it affect uh, um, life day to day life but they can survive easily 10 to 15 years so and few cancers easily can be removable oral cancer you can cut and remove so 50 out of every 100 people diagnosed with cancer in england and wales live live for 10 years or more cancer at an early stage does not usually kill you a lot of effort is put into early diagnosis when treatment is going to work best so we should identify diagnosis is the best so how does cancer uh, kills so why it is uh, going to spread only to specified organs so cancer blocks G and if it goes to metastasis why it is a problem as i told it is a disorder it will go one place to another place you people are able to see top uh, uh, this one heading yes yes heading you are able to see sir how does can because for ah. me there is obstruction you are able to see ah yes it is visible oh, okay sir fine so uh, if cancer block gi tract or partly block it so food cannot uh, through the gut and nutrients and calories you don't get it absorbed if we didn't get absorbed that food materials 
so then we won't get energy obviously whole body is going to be weak and you can't eat and you can't drink if esophagus cancer is there similarly coming to lungs cancer might block half part of the lung this part then collapse and then become infected low oxygen levels in the body uh, because cancer is there because if lung uh, cells are not functioning you will not get a gases exchange and coming to liver liver is the chemical factory for us it does a me uh, metabolism of uh, genobiotics so cancer can upset its chemical balance it can be life threatening so benign and malignant so what is benign many people will have benign uh, tumors uh, in our body some we call a kanita so any material which is a hard in our body in one place in hands or legs we don't have to feel uh, bad that is just going to be benign and it will be there forever even we can cut and remove it but even if you didn't remove nothing will happen so that is called benign malignant malignant means it is going to spread that is called cancer so differentiation well differentiated well differentiated means that cell is uh, similar to our normal cell we can able to see what is this cell anaplastic we cannot able to differentiate growth rate they are very slow and these are rapid very fast mode of growth expansive here infiltrate and expansive means it will go from one place to another here only because if we are growing that is also is growing metastasis it won't go but it can spread to other organs prognosis usually harmless can be fatal if uh, not treated so then classification some people say so they got breast adenoma what is adenoma uh, adenoma means whichever glandular cells getting a cancer uh, carcinoma will say carcinoma means epithelial cells get cancer that is called carcinoma and uh, if a benign form is that that is adenoma cancer is the uh, carcinoma but if you say sarcoma sarcoma means it comes to connective tissue cells our blood blood cells are called a connective tissue blood is called a connective tissue so if blood cancer comes that is called sarcoma so that is the difference fibrosarcoma means blood cells in fibroblasts is getting the cancer so these are different terms if you read it or uh, you will definitely encounter these words uh, in your day and day life you will read somewhere in newspaper or in phone or somewhere so we should know the meaning if you don't remember now also whenever you see you google it so these are the terms so then uh, invasion and metastasis so cancer cells actually invade it direct spread or body cavities blood vessels so this is the uh, pictorial diagram so usually when benign cancer is there not cancer tumor cells grow only local but if the malignant is there they keep growing growing and forms a lump here and slowly one cell will come out or two cells will come out if one or two comes is just moving but three four cells coming is a group we call a mob moving group uh, group migration they comes and uh, place it into the lung again it will go to blood circulation from the lung because lung is the one which oxygenate our blood and send it to heart so then again it will go like primary tumor again example primary tumor they enter into the blood circulation or lymph they slowly enter into the bones brain or lungs wherever they want liver so then all organs will have a cancer so tumor abnormal enlargement neoplasm is the same as tumor so but last we have read what is the stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 but somebody says uh, maybe especially for pharmacy students if they are there so they will see uh, in the case sheets there is a grade 2 tumor what is grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 grading a neoplasm assigned by pathologist to refer to the cancer's degree and differentiation so well differentiated means they look like normal cell but grade 2 means moderate differentiated so in breast cancer if we take a needle biopsy and if they compare with normal breast cells if they are normal means that is uh, grade 1 but if they are not normal they are looking different moderate differentiated grade 3 poorly differentiated grade 4 nearly anaplastic that means it is we are unable to differentiate only so staging means progression or spread grading means cellular differentiation these two terms we should know 
and uh, it will be written in case sheets or case summary. If you uh, somebody is going to do pharmacovigilance at those places, they have to read these papers only. So there you will read T N M staging. T means based on the size. If the size is small or big, tumor size. N means uh, lymph node involvement metastasis. M means indicates whether distant metastasis are uh, present. So the T N M forms uh, are filled out uh, out using the clinical and pathological criteria and aid in determination of therapy. So if you see here T one small, T four it is a big big size. Nodal N2 means it is spread to only two uh, two lymph nodes, so like that. So these are the examples. TS1 in situ only one place. T1 small, T2 large like that. T4 is a very large. Similarly, N0 no lymph node involvement. M1 no distant metastasis. But when you call N3 more distant lymph node, M1 is a distant metastasis present. Okay. Right as of now, we learned about what is cancer and how it is differ with uh, uh, other disorders, and what is the metastasis, what is the staging, grading. We learned, but how to do uh, diagnosis? So, what kind of diagnosis models are there for cancer? Uh, because you will tell for fever, how to measure fever is a simply you will take a thermometer and put it either in arm fit or in the mouth. It will say temperature. You want to measure BP, you will put a sphygmomanometer and uh, check it. You will find out, uh, okay, he has a BP if it cross 120 by 80. But how cancer will differentiate or, or uh, diabetes? You just take a drop of blood and put it in a glucometer. It will give some reading, which is if it cross uh, early morning one before eating. If it cross 120, it is a diabetic. If it is a pre post prandial, if it is cross maybe 160, it is going to be diabetic. Or HbA1c, different uh, are there. But cancer, what are the diagnoses? Many people will not know because it is not in a day to day life for everyone. One in a thousand maybe will be having a cancer, or maybe one in five thousand. So if you see histological methods, histology we have to do cytopathology that is called FNAC. Fine needle aspiration cytology and uh, immunohistochemistry or uh, molecular diagnosis and tumor markers. So, what are the tumor markers? So, if we measure uh, thyroid, there is a CAE test, lung uh, CA125, esophagus CEA, breast CEA, uh, ovaries, uterus, metastasis. So, there are different markers are there. So, types of uh, cancer treatment, okay, we know. Diagnosis, we diagnosis with some cancer, somebody. So, what are the treatment? I we wanted to educate them as a pharmacy graduate. So, how will you educate? You will say, Yeah, don't worry, there is a process called surgery. They will do surgery and open and remove it. The, again, they will give treatment that is called adjuvant chemotherapy. If they give treatment before surgery, that is called new adjuvant chemotherapy because we want to shrink the tumor. You just imagine tumor is big. But there are a lot of blood vessels are going in our body. If you cut tumor, blood vessels also will get cut. So how will you do? You want to uh, separate them. So that means you shrink it. You remove the uh, bulkiness. So if you remove the bulkiness, it will divide from the blood vessel. So then it, they can cut easily. So the, to shrink it, you will give it chemotherapy that is called neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Then radiation, chemotherapy, immunotherapy, hormone therapy, targeted stem cell therapy. These are different therapies are there. Now we'll come to chemotherapy, which is there in our curriculum now. And those are all basics because if you know basic, you will be able to apply properly here. Uh, otherwise, you will read, okay, what is the doxorubicin is going to do? Doxorubicin is going to inhibit the topocyzomerase too. And uh, maybe it will uh, uh, alkylating agent, it uh, breaks the DNA. But you should know why it is needed to break the DNA, why it is topose MRAs, where are they? They are all in cells. That's why we learned all the basics first. So now coming to chemotherapy. Definitely, you, you have been uh, holding Goodman and Gilman once or at least twice, is a big book. And uh, he is the first person to find out the uh, nitrogen mustards is a chemotherapy. He is the discoverer. 
So era of modern chemotherapy began in 1940s. So Goodman Gilman is the first administered the nitrogen mustard to patients with the lymphoma. So nitrogen mustard was developed as a war gas rather than as a medicine. So, but in 90s only Paul H. Rich is he uh, coined the term called chemotherapy. Then 1940s. Uh, he is the Gilman and he is the Goodman. There are two people, so not one name. That is it. two peoples. They identified the use of mustards, and then uh, 1950s use of methotrexate. He is the Indian Dr. Ella Pragada Subbarao. He went to uh, foreign and uh, due to something he stru- stuck there only, and he discovered a lot of medicines like tetracycline, methotrexate. unfortunately name did not come to india because he did everything in no uh, abroad so but he discovered wonderful drugs so like methotrexate tetracycline you would have read it even it is there in no uh, 5th class or 8th class uh, about his story then come to uh, discovery of uh, bleomycin in 1962 uh, in japan they have identified humao uh, majawa at the institute of microbial chemistry in tokyo so they identified bleomycin so later later several drugs has come doxorubicin and all these and now uh, systemic uh, there are advanced therapies also available i will show what are those advanced also so definitely you will be reading my nitrogen mustards methotrexate and bleomycin but what is chemotherapy so why we are calling it but in diabetes or or any other disorders we are not giving any name we are just taking as a drugs but here we are taking a name called chemotherapy chemotherapy means we are giving a therapy with the chemicals to kill the cells that's why chemo therapy therapy means is going to be treatment chemotherapy mm-hmm. acts with tumor cells at the cellular level by inter, uh, interrupting the process or inhibition so during the cell cycle there is a replication of the entire genome and a division of the cell into genetically identical daughters so the what is the goal of our chemotherapy cure prolonged survival prolonged survival means in instead of cancer is coming they say 3 to 4 years life we want to increase it another maybe one or two years palliation palliation means if he is unable to take it we will not force it radio sense to so chemotherapy mechanisms so how these acts i will show separately also but i am telling example if you take cis platinum it uh, causes a gsh uh, glutathione uh, this one and it causes a, a damage to mitochondrial dna and dna damage and uh, glutathione reductase these causing the ros reactive oxygen species ros and causing again dna damage so this leads to cytochrome c uh, destruction leading to apoptosis like similarly 5 fluorouracil or methotrexate these inhibits the 5 fluoro uh, this causing the fluoro d uh, utps and it causing the dna damage and similarly docetaxel or paclitaxel they are inhibits the microtubule stabilization where uh, cell division happens so it inhibits the cell division so obviously they cannot form so it undergoes apoptosis so all goes apoptosis apoptosis me programmed cell death we have given a program going to kill in this similar manner so how this drugs act there is you would have read in chemical classification or biological classification somewhere it is written as a cell cycle dependent and cell cycle non dependent chemotherapy we should know what is cell cycle now so in cell cycle there are five phases g1 s g2 m and g0 phase so g1 means uh, cell prepares for dna and s means generates the complete copy and g2 cell prepares for mitosis and m phase is a replicated and g0 is a resting so these are the drugs where they are acting if you see cell cycle specific wink alkylates act on no uh, m phase bleomycin these are all act in no uh, uh, s phase metabolites these are in no uh, um g1 to s phase so like this there is drugs acting in different phases so chemotherapy drugs the overall mechanism if you see in purine synthesis inhibitor six mark of the purine or methotrexate or uh, ribonucleotide reductase hydroxyurea uh, dna secretions like bleomycin doxorubicin these inhibits the protein synthesis l aspirginase and mitro- microtubule inhibitors vinco alkylates 
so each one has having a different uh, uh, mechanisms so how these drugs act okay we read it how these act so they act majorly on dna dna you know it is a double stranded uh, um, form nucleotides chain and it has a leading and a lagging strand it's a replication of fork when replication fork is continuing dna forms in 5 prime to 3 prime stage in a leading strand so where uh, five prime hydroxyl group of leading strand is going to connect with the three prime of uh, oh group with nucleotides so then replication strand will happen but these drugs inhibits either dna polymerase inhibitors or inter intercalating enzyme so how biological dna is important so if they break the dna what is going to happen so if they break the dna so dna controls our cell metabolism growth and differentiation so that will not form and the dna undergoes recombination of my uh, my meiosis and occasional mutation so we are going to cut it so like cyclophosphamide you are uh, uh, phosphamide these inhibits the uh, dna synthesis the most cytotoxic trait to rapidly proliferating cells so these cross links between gg and g they put a cross link then cut it so it is going to be a break dna strand breaks if dna strand breaks cell will not survive so another example doxorubicin this is a normal dna topoisomerase 2 it is going to unwind it by helicase and it is going to dna synthesis properly but if you put doxorubicin it go and sit in between the two strands and cut it no dna synthesis then platinum cis platinum or uh, oxaliplatin how these drugs act these drugs act on mitochondrial membrane and release the cytochrome c and leading to apoptosis so then again come to methotrexate or uh, fifluoroacetyl those inhibit the folic acid synthesis inhibitors but how it is important for folic acid folate aids in the production of red blood cells aids in synthesis of dna and uh, folate works with the b12 and vitamin c to help the body digest and utilize it but if you take a fifluoroacetyl is going to inhibit the folic acid synthesis so cells will die but you can have a question um, you have told it is important folic acid and you are going to inhibit it so how human will survive so for that there is a drug called uh, leucovarin yeah i'll tell that next slide but methotrexate also do same mechanism it is going to inhibit it so this leucovarin is the drug which is the derivative of uh, tetrahydrofolate so this compete with methotrexate for active transport into cells so then it will rescue by stopping the uh, toxicity of uh, methotrexate so if we use fifluoroacetyl regularly for colon cancer patients it is approved for colon cancer fda all drugs will be approved by fda federal uh, um, uh, fda administration drug administration federal drug administration so those people will approve the drugs in uh, usa so they approved for colon cancer if you use for colon cancer the cytotoxicity of fifluoroacetyl causes the hepatic sinusoidal syndrome so each, that's why if we take leucovarin maybe it will reduce it as a compensatory we are going to take it so like vinca alkaloids these bind to tubulin and prevent polymerization of tubulin thus preventing the microtubule formation and small differences in uh, changes in toxicity and activity then come to so those are the major drugs in your curriculum but there are advanced drugs i will show few you. you can read in uh, even google so but uh, you are saying okay can we take chemotherapy drugs chemotherapy drugs is going to kill whole the cells it doesn't differentiate cancer cell and normal cell that's why in movies or many places they show that uh, cancer chemotherapy they will hair will not be there they become thin and pale uh, no blood because it is going to kill rapidly proliferating cells hair is the rapidly growing proliferative cells and our gi tract that's why they get diarrhea and uh, all blood cells our blood cells having a life span of uh, 120 days few few or 10 days Uh, like that only the wbc spray let's all will go and coming again and again so those are going to kill it so instead of that can we do any targeted you are seeing there is a blast explosion or here is a shooting 
you are going to kill only the cancer cells how can i kill so even here when they are using this light they put a light first in many movies you will definitely see light will go on that they will shoot it that is called target so but here how will i give target so you can still identify cancer cells express some markers that is called cancer stem cells or uh, there is a egfr uh, kras identifications so we have to tag it drug will be tagged with that thing and that will go and deliver the drug in the cells only so monoclonal antibodies like that the, those so specific disruption pathways unique to a cancer specially designed with a certain molecular target generally mild side effect these are the novel drugs which is not there in your books as of now or i don't know maybe now recent uh, um, publications if comes maybe they would have put it but these are the novel drugs like aerobic glycolysis inhibitors or parp inhibitors wedge uh, of inhibitor or uh, telomerase inhibitors so these are the novel drugs so what kind of uh, as i told chemotherapy means is going to give lot of side effects so these are the side effects if patient takes fatigue hair loss kidney problems or uh, infection anemia dry skin diarrhea loss of libido all these so those you can mitigate if you use uh, uh, targeted okay so now uh, but how to identify these drugs you want to as a pharmacy person all either you like uh, medicinal chemistry you like uh, pharmacy practice pharmacology or pharmaceutics is all going to be involved in the drug discovery so but each one having a different role like if pharmaceutics is interested you will go into production and uh, fr and d formulation development because that is also important how to deliver drug is important uh if whether should we take give injection should we give tablet or capsule or syrup how would you decide if it is a small kid you want to give it as a syrup uh, you if okay uh, maybe 10 years 12 years you can give a tablet but few drugs are unstable in the stomach gi tract acid is there or they will not go by availability much so you will give injections so that's why different so formation will be having a play a role so but how these all drugs are identified how long one will take to identify drugs we will take nearly 15 years if you see 6.5 years is in a drug discovery and stage 2 then 7 years in clinical trials fda 1.5 why we will take let's say if you take 10000 compounds in drug discovery we do lot of screenings uh, as in the industry of chemical technology majority of them are chemist in our institute one 130 chemistry scientists are there 20 are biologists are there so if we take it they will use some compounds if you i want to test it we test we get only one or two hits then we will say oh, is not good again they will make something so like that if you come to pre clinical pre clinical means either in cell culture or animal models that is called pre clinical then stage 2 is called phase 1 we will give drugs to healthy volunteers and see whether drug is good or not not the efficacy wise whether fever you identified replicate of paracetamol uh, you want to test it my drug is better than paracetamol for reducing the fever so you will give it to only healthy persons and see it is not causing any side effects then phase 2 will come so phase 2 you will give it to 100 to 500 people but they are fewer people who uh, patients you will see whether reduced or not phase 3 is going to happen in 1000 to 5000 but there will be a standard drug paracetamol also will be given to one set of people 1000 people you will give so then you will tell okay our drug is good or bad if it is bad it will not go all money got wasted uh, then if it is good it will go to nda new drug uh, uh, application and it will be fda review and uh, fda approves it is going to come to market this will take lot of money in billions and it takes a 15 years so as a pharmacy graduate you should try to enter some field either in is academics or going to industry or uh, like me going to be a researcher 
you will see this cycle so as i told how pharmacy students will play major role target selection bioinformatician so if somebody are interested in microbiology and those cellular targets they can define and bioinformatics subject will be there in m form uh, they can sitting as a uh, bioinformatician and lead discovery like synthesis medicinal chemistry or chemi uh, organic chemist they will synthesize isolate and development then medicinal chemistry so looking in the in silico programs or library development checking for the which disease then in vitro studies biologist pharmacologist can do in vitro studies and in vivo studies both we do develop lot of animal models lot of cell culture models and then clinical trials this are going to be let's say farm d student they can easily enter into this so overall pharmacy is going to play major role in drug discovery so i will show few of in vitro experiments for screening how to do uh, like you want to test some drug is there whether it acts as a anti cancer or not so you will simply take uh, some cells and put it in a plate and we incubate with the drugs or plant extract whatever you have then you will take a absorbency by doing mtt assay or srb assay if more kill more killing is there you will see low purple color if killing is not there you will see dark purple then you want to see you told a lot of things about migration invasion metastasis so how to so so you will plate cells and you will make a scratch because you you want to you say that it is helping for wound healing and it is a very good uh, molecule i have so you want to test it so you will give a scratch and you will put on to the cells if wound is getting closed that means it has a wound healing property then how to do uh, molecular biology like pcr western blot yesterday sir would have told uh, that's why i put only one image uh, you are said targeted so what we do is that after cell culture treatment we lyse the cells and we load into the sds page gel and we run it and transfer to a membrane then we will add the antibodies if i want to look for cd44 i'll put a cd44 antibody we will develop it so if the band is big that means more expression if band is slight that means no expression then pre clinical models animal experiments so genetically engineered mouse models human cell models patient derived we do the first two models patient derived i used to do in my phd but here we don't have ethical clearance to do this so as of now we are not doing so genetically engineering mice means uh, uh, mice will have a we altered the mouse and uh, to cause the cancer human cancer means we will inject the cells i will show how we to do that so transplanted models like syngenic models we put a b16f10 cells uh, in c57 mice so i guess now uh, for pharmacy colleges there is no approvals iaec iaec is not there i guess you will not able to see mouse and rat or uh, frogs when i did uh, first diploma in pharmacy in bapatla college in 2004 we st i started so we used to hold the frogs even once uh, jayram red sir in uh, am reddy college also brought the frogs once so we used to do muscle experiments <laughs> so like like mouse and rat models you will not able to see but you can google it and see how c57 mice looks and uh, a rat because these are going to be uh, not wild ones these are lab grown mouse so balbsi mice it is a white mouse so we put uh, 41 cells into the balbsi and what is called implant site if you do orthotopic means if it is a breast cancer we have to put in the breast region only our uh, brain we have to put in a brain by there is a stereotaxic instrument is there it will give a hole and heterotropic means we can put anywhere subcutaneous so some spontaneous models if you do carcinogen uh, in uh, there is a chemical model if you put chemicals it will form a spontaneous models and dissociated tumors you will take a tumor cells and put it into the again mouse homograft i'll take from one animal and put it into another animal but if you called a cell line derived cdx models genograft that is we take culture the cells put into the mouse and we give a treatment mm -hmm. 
So then patient derived means we have to take from the patient when the surgery happens, mm -hmm. those cells will come and put it here, mm -hmm. then they form a tumor cell. So these are uh, some of my experiments we, which we published are uh, uh, going to publication. So those images I put for uh, example purpose. So if we take uh, MD, MD231, these are breast cancer cells and we inject it into the nude mouse in uh, fifth inguinal gland in the breast region. Here they will have a six, uh, uh, two into six uh, breast nodules will be there. We, inje we inject in uh, fourth or fifth inguinal gland they form a lot of uh, big tumor. This is called uh, IVA spectra mission, like, like how humans have a PET scan or MRI scan. This is a scan for the animals. So we have it in uh, IAC where I did PhD. Here also we have uh, in I IACT also. So we took image and we were able to see what okay, the tumor is there. After 50 days, it went to lungs. So we are able to track it because I labeled the cells. Similarly, I injected into the uh, are the topic only in the breast region from taking cells from the previous mouse. Those will be learned how to grow fast. So they move to lungs very fast. Then these are the heart intracardiac mouse model. I injected into the heart, they went to lungs and that's why you are seeing the nodules in the lung. Then this is the hep G2. Uh, hep G2 cancer model is the hepatic cancer. So we injected into the after injecting two days, I have taken an imaging, whether I injected into the liver or, I mean, definitely we know it is liver, just to see whether cells are live or not. Then after 20 days, it become like this, mouse becomes so much bigger. So we cut it, only liver is this, but tumor is see how much grown it much. Then this is the, uh, we injected subcutaneous and take the images. So this is the colon cancer model, we injected into the, uh, cecum into the mouse and we again put it inside and uh, we closed it by sutures. Then they become big stomach. So after two, uh, that, uh, 15 days itself, see this is the colon where we injected. This is the tumor. This is the liver and other organs. Metastasis also it happened in many places. So this also we have taken imaging uh, to see before killing whether tumor is there or not. So as of now is done. If you ask me questions, I'll tell. Then later I will tell uh, opportunities for pharma. You can ask questions now. I will tell what is the useful things in the next slide, like opportunities for pharma. But before that, if you have any doubts, you can ask. Be friendly, you, you can ask anything. Are you a SARS or me? We won't say anything. Even if you small thing, you can ask. If it is actually face to face in your college, it would have been definitely good due to some uh, unfor unforeseen conditions. It happened in virtual. That's what SAR told. So you can ask. Pharma the students, do you have any doubts? Fifth and fourth family students. So fourth B from definitely you will have chemotherapy. You can ask, not only chemotherapy, you can ask anything in your pharmacology. Because I read several times Rangandale, several times Goodman Gilman, you can ask. And I work majorly on lung and liver uh, uh, disorders and cancer. So my PhD is in, on cancer, breast cancer. So 2011, I started in IASC. 
and 16 I completed uh, in breast cancer field itself and I published nearly some 15 papers in uh, PhD time. Those are all uh, repeated and uh, international journals only. So later I moved to Strand Life Science, which is a company where we do diagnosis for cancer. Not only diagnosis, is going to be research. So these are all will come. You have to open up, open up. If you shrink and don't ask any questions, uh -huh. you will not know. You can Google it, but there won't be a single answer in Google. You will get multiple answers in Google. You will not know which is correct. So that's why I'm telling be friendly. You can ask. Nothing is going to lose it. Don't think your sorry will feel or uh, somebody, why did you ask? Nobody will say anything. What is there? Anything is a doubt. For you, it is doubt. Maybe if I know, I will tell answer. If I don't know, I won't tell. That's also simple. I have general doubts, sir. Yeah, please ask. Is there any possibility to visit our research area, sir? Yeah, yeah, Alas yes. And with our students. Yeah, yeah, yes. So I will give one uh, coordinator number. Uh, so many students will come from many places to our institute. So uh, okay. they will allow, they will give specified date because many people is coming now, they, they don't want to overlap it. So okay, okay. you can come and visit all chemistry labs, our lab, we have wonderful animal facility, which is like, uh, you will see only in companies, uh, that kind of, uh, which is 11 crores, uh, our animal facility. Okay, sir. Okay. Is there any limit, sir? Number of students to visit the it's not there, but smaller number is always better because okay, sir. focus will be there. If many people comes, if let's say more than 50 comes, it is going to be a bit difficult for you people and for our people also. They won't allow if only 10 okay. people are there. Example, I'm telling. I will make them to sit in my lab for some time. They can see everything. If 50 are there we are unable to fit it inside the lab also. They will fit, but our labs are big. And our B farm class strength is 110, sir. Yeah, that is the reason I am asking. Understood, understood. Maybe you can get it two times. That's all. Okay, sir. Okay. Some, uh, some people in the third year and some after that in uh, fourth year people, different uh, batches you can get in uh, maybe two times as Single time is maybe difficult. You can talk to our, uh, I will give coordinator number. Okay, sir. Okay. And coordinate with him uh, because they are some procedures. So, but okay. they will allow you. They will allow you in all the okay, days. sir. Thank you, sir. Except uh, Saturday and Sundays. An institute is, has a holiday, but uh, we work, my students and I will definitely come to lab. Okay, sir. But they won't allow. Saturday is, uh, and ours is very strict. <laughs> Even our student doesn't have ID card, they won't allow. So, okay. but anyway, you can come. So anyway, st students, please ask questions. I will go to opportunity slide, but still you can ask. Nothing is going to be wrong. And I'm telling, be friendly. You feel like I'm you, I am also one of your, uh, though I know it is a women's college. So that's why I'm not able to tell uh, as a classmate, but you feel it. So I'll tell you what Hello, I'm sir. Yeah, please ask. Good. Hmm. Sir, his, this cancer is, is it genetically? This, it means it will transfer genetically or it yes. will coming only for person to person? Yeah, few cancers are genetically, uh, like ovarian cancer. And I will not say it is completely genetical. If mother has, the daughter has to come, there is no rule. But there is a risk factor, 10 to 20 percent, it can come, ovarian cancer and breast cancer, because these are hormone-dependent cancers. There is a possibility to come, but there is no thumb rule. But uh, if mother has cervical cancer, there is a vaccine for it. So few cancers has already vaccines. Vaccine means, you know, it is going to be prevention. You will take it. In future, that won't come. So, but majority of the cancers are all cancers are not genetic. Uh, they comes by mutation, but few cancers and there is only 10 to 20 percent. That means in 100 uh, breast cancer patients are there, only 10 breast cancer patients, daughters might get the cancer. That is also might I am telling, may get, there is no rule, but they may get it. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. One more doubt, sir. 
yes. in currently we are seeing nanoparticles are using in cancer therapy and all mm. and ha uh, these nanoparticles are nanoparticle therapy is available sir now yes only for docetaxel it is available Pac you are seeing the paclitaxel docetaxel i have shown in the chemotherapy for docetaxel liposomes uh, uh, formation is available not for other uh, other formations were not approved many are there in clinical trials so nanoparticle is only is going to give extra surface area so low drug also can be more potential it is a good technology for the pharmaceutical side it is going to give maybe wonderful results but as of now only one drug is there for therapeutic use but there are gels uh, there are vitamin d Uh, nano suspensions also there uh, but cancer wise only docetaxel okay sir thank you anyhow other students also can ask so i'm moving uh, see what are the best choice after b pharm so i know definitely you people won't sit in uh, uh, medical shop which is not required because you did a b pharm which is a good course i believe it is good course uh, you also have to believe it because you are doing so you will get industrial job if you do decent internship in industry or national labs usually we won't give internship for the b pharm students we give only for m pharm students m pharm uh, one of your uh, senior she is doing in uh, phd in uh, one of my colleagues lab she has one paper with me also uh, but she, she has been she, she was your uh, senior so you can do for after m pharm only we give intern internship but only m pharm students so job in pharma sector after b pharm but you will get only in maybe in production or packing and those which is going to be very small or m pharm c with g pat you should go with uh, g pat or you can otherwise maybe management seat whatever seat or if you like it medicinal uh, medical pharmacology or medical biotechnology is there in some university that course also good or pharma mba pharma mba you should have a guts to do it if you do it you will go into marketing side it is going to be good instead of going after m pharm do mba in pharma and go for marketing it is good or direct phd you don't need actual m pharm i was not knowing this option when i am studying if i would have known it i wouldn't have done it m pharm but it is good course uh, in manipal uh, m pharm pharmacology is very good even sutix is good uh, so i am still i am adjunct faculty in uh, manipal college also so if you do m pharm is obviously good with your heart you have to study is not just like studying i will get a pass it anyone can pass what is there in that so but you have to read in a depth so or you can do direct phd with the csa or net or gate you do either net or gate you can enter into our lab also as a pharmacy student uh, phd you will get stipend around 42000 per month for 5 years you will get it will it increases as after third year from third year you will become srf senior research fellow close to 50000 yeah. so next is which course should we take in uh, maybe in mcom that is depend on you you will if you like uh, sutix you will take sutix if you like medicinal chemistry you will do it but anything if you read well and apply well your uh, readings application is there you will get a good job so take suggestions from your seniors or professors who are mentoring you and if you really interested in any of the subject find out the best college for that course that is important so also depends on on a career for example as i told phd or own entrepreneur industrial job you can take it so along with the tradi uh, traditional mpharm subjects there are different subjects regulatory affairs which gives a lot of scope on pharmaceutical quality assurance there are good subjects not like just to take okay mpharm pharmacology uh, or uh, sorry um, and m pharm pharmaceuticals you can take regulatory affairs is good and it would be if you do phd how i mean where should i take how it will be 
if you take uh, it would be very interesting if you have a desire to do phd and need to join institutes like iits iit if you want you have to get it into either csir or gate iais also same csir also same iisr all will be same but there is again clause is there uh, if you work as a project assistant after mfarm for two years or something you can register with us again if we have a uh, fellowship or we will get to you some fellowship we will write some proposal and get you out so our pharmaceutical technology chemistry analysis have a lot of scope after phd because if you have a phd in a good institute like iaicts or iacs iits you will get a decent job uh, and especially for pharmacy practice and pharmacy uh, pharmd students will have bright future in clinical trials and case studies now india is also started many of medical writing data analysis they can join there and how would be the phd like you do phd what is the fate well will i get a good job it's uh, completely depend on you um, you will definitely get it if you do well so is always is linked to your interest how you reading how you are applying that brain okay today i read only pharmac um, sutics this dosage formulation i write in the exam then i will forget means uh, i don't think so you will get a great job you have to apply you have to feel it okay i made a nano suspension okay nano means it looks like this because google is there you can google it see youtube videos uh, even if you are unable to do in your lab you can see everything in virtual now so like if you get a phd scientist in either of the government sector or industries i worked in two industries so then i got this job i just moved it because i want to do my own research in industry someone will dictate you you have to do only this experiment so i will not have a my choice but here it is not like that here is my choice i will have i have one lab i have some students five students i have if whatever i tell definitely they will do it so my interest if i change after five years now i am working as i told uh, breast cancer lung and uh, liver i want to move it to something brain i will move it so in industry it is not like that then as assist, assistant professor either in government or private and post doc you can do in abroad or india wherever so since being a women college i put this slide uh, your sar also mentioned uh, so what is the extra benefit women is going to get it government gives lot of schemes for women's development so there is a single woman child if you are a only one child one girl child you directly apply for phd you don't need any exam you will get it but how to get it you have to approach to some uh, ccmb iact or whatever some institute and then um, you have to see a notification when the notification comes you can apply it and the women scientist b it has a two thing uh, women scientist a is for post doc uh, means after phd but uh, b is the for doing phd you if you have a one good paper if you do your internship either in college or in uh, our kind of uh, institute during your m farm uh, that paper is there that's all you can apply for the women scientist b you will get it and good fellowship also is there more than 40000 will come women scientist c is like intellectual property self employment government will give that so these are the eligibility like science and technology domain any one and qualification is uh, mpharm is there so definitely you can apply and phd in basic or applied mpharm again comes under applied sciences so that means one and two options is good for us for pharmacy definitely and women scientist a and b is no age bar it is from 27 onwards so that means maybe mpharm will finish by 24 years then you if you work in either in college or industry it is good uh then you can apply better is that either industry or some institute so these are some common fields i put so with this i am stopping if you have any questions you can ask that's all thank you
thank you sir thank you um, really it was pleasure to listen your lecture sir which was insightful and helpful regarding cancer physiology you made the explanation simple and easy that we could all understand easy manner yes. all the concepts like cancer physiology mechanism of anti cancer drugs and drug discovery process also hope this talk will motivate our students and faculty members to participate in anti cancer research process thank you sir for giving us this opportunity thank you very much for accepting our invitation also thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir now we can go to the second talk acchara with uh, mr kartikeyan reddy garu and i request mrs lakshmi kumari garu to introduce the second resource person mr kartikeyan reddy garu good morning everyone i d lakshmi kumari working as assistant professor in department of pharmaceutics vijay institute of pharmaceutical sciences for women it's my privilege to introduce the profile of kartikeya reddy garu on the second day national webinar sir completed his masters in department of pharmacology from sri vasavi institute of pharmaceutical sciences tade paligodam currently sir is working as a drug safety team manager in pharmaco vigilance department at cognizen technology solutions hyderabad Sa had 10 years of work experience in the domain of pharmaco vigilance. Sa worked as a pharmaco vigilance team leader and drug safety operational manager at Bioclinica India Private Limited Mysore from 2018 to 21. Sa also worked as ICSR technical trainer, quality reviewer, drug safety associates at Tata Consultancy Services Mumbai from 2013 to 18. Coming to the sa skills and responsibilities. Sa had a very good track record of maintaining positive relationship with the clients. Sa is dedicated to high quality deliverable in the field of pharmaco vigilance and ICSR reporting. Sa is excellent in coordinating with department and safety functional areas to ensure timely review, timely submission of reports, and timely documentation and also evaluation process. As a drug safety operator manager. perform works related to strategic planning risk analysis and workflow department sar actively participates in quality investigator and implementer to corrective and preventive actions apart from these sar is lean towards process improvement process optimization like six sigma green belt certified and report writing like psur pbrer sar has gained knowledge in various database programs like case submission Oracle SQL, ARGUS Safety Database, ARISG Safety Database. Sir participates in various audits and inspections taking place in companies. We are very happy and proud to have you in this webinar, sir. I am elated to ask Karthikeya Reddy, sir, to deliver lecture on role of pharmaco vigilance and its future prospects. Thank you so much. Sir. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much for the brief introduction. That was uh, uh, great. Um, yeah, can you can someone please confirm if you can hear me? Am I audible? Yeah, yes, sir, audible, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Thanks for confirming. Uh, just give me a minute. Let me share the screen. Yeah, can you please confirm if you can see the screen, sir? Yes, yeah, sir, it's visible, sir. Thank you, thank you for confirming, sir. Yeah, myself, uh, Kartikeya Reddy. Thanks for the brief introduction about me. 
and i would like to thank uh, the principal management jairam reddy sir and nirja madam uh, uh, i would like to extend my thanks for uh, providing uh, an opportunity to share my views with all the students and the faculty over here and uh, conducting these kind of webinars thank you very much for that yeah uh, would like to i think uh, here we have the uh, students of uh, all the years sir is it or third fourth third and fourth final year students okay okay farm the students also in this okay and do we have m farm uh, students also sir m farm farm d b farm students okay okay that's great thank you very much yeah fine it's uh, my pleasure to uh, uh, deliver this topic on pharmacovigilance with you all okay i'll go ahead uh, with the topic if you have any questions in between uh, please feel free to stop me and at the same time i have added one of the slide at the last of this uh, at the end of this presentation uh, which covers the questions uh, i felt whatever the questions that may trigger from the students perspective and the kind of the thought process they have uh, in the um, right now in whatever the situation or the level they are in i have included i'll try to answer those questions post that if there are any further questions uh, you can please feel free to reach out to me yeah now the topic is about overview on pharmacovigilance and future prospects okay uh, i'll give you a brief uh, on pharmacovigilance before that uh, uh, i'm not going into any of the topics in detail uh, it's a kind of uh, movie trailer where i can describe you how it is going to be how the pharmacovigilance and what are the changes that are happening in the recent days in pharmacovigilance how it evolved from the last 10 years from the start of my career what is the current situation with pharmacovigilance and how it is going to be later and for the people who are aspiring to get into the pharmacovigilance uh, uh, career how it is going to be what kind of things they should be prepared of or uh, and what is the industry expecting from the students yeah obviously the students might be very let me take some time a while here uh, before i get into the topic yeah the students might be very thorough with their academic knowledge but also it is required to understand the demand or the requirements or the expectations from the industry aspects or the organization or company aspects what all the things they should be thorough and what kind of knowledge and what kind of competencies or the skills they should be having to get into this and to excel in the career these kind of things i'd be uh, taking you all through okay before that i would like to uh, take you uh, from the start about the history how the pharmacovigilance has evolved why is it required where does we require pharmacovigilance what are all the companies that are operating uh, with pharmacovigilance what kind of uh, it uh, it or cro's uh, companies what kind of services they do provide for pharmacovigilance aspects and all those things i would be covering here okay yeah first of all i would like to uh, as it is a virtual mode uh, otherwise we we should have uh, much josh uh, to interact uh, with the uh, with with more uh, zeal we should have uh, have a platform to interact with you all but still uh, if uh, the students have access of uh, commenting over the chat box or uh, you can also uh, send your thoughts or uh, you can uh, use the emoticons over there you can uh, click on the thumbs up or whatever if you have any questions or something please use the emoticons and at the same time use the chat box uh, to communicate with me so that i can see the chat box and respond to those questions uh, accordingly okay that should be fine right can we all go ahead can i start with the talk can i expect any uh, kind of uh, signs over there in the chat box okay fine yeah pharmacovigilance uh, as this is something a greek word pharmacon means medical substance vigilia means to keep a watch it's all about to monitor what is happening let's say i'll give you an example uh, le uh, let's say we have a pond over there uh and everyone ha is going to leave a fish in the pond with their name and they just want to monitor it regularly how is it moving what kind of food it is taking and all those things 
and to understand what kind of uh, uh, climatic changes are happening whatever in the same way as soon as the drugs okay starting uh, they release into the market the companies will be keenly monitoring on their drugs okay they will keep a watch okay and what is happening what kind of adverse reactions uh, the people are getting what kind of reports they are receiving from the uh, uh, population they have you uh, administered with the medication and all those things okay uh, now uh, this is the who definition which says the science and activities relating to the detection assessment understanding and prevention of adverse effects or any other medicinal uh, or vaccine related problems okay now uh, how did we get this pharmacovigilance when did we start with pharmacovigilance actually okay PV or drug safety got started about 170 years ago. It's not something uh, a recent one. It got started, but there was no term called, uh, people was never used with the terms called as pharmacovigilance or drug safety or something else. But it was there. But there are no very stringent rules and regulations at the starting period. Okay, but uh, uh, there unfortunately they have seen a lot of issues with respect to the drugs that are marketed and people have taken. Okay, in the 1848 itself, uh, if I give you uh, to give you a brief uh, uh, to remove the ingrown nail of a patient of 15 year old, they have given the chloroform. Later, uh, uh, it caused fibrillation of ventricles and death of the patient. And somewhere in 1936 uh, to 37. Uh, sulfonylamide tragedy also has happened. Sulfonylamide was actively used uh, for streptococcal infections during that time. And uh, it was going good, but uh, they uh, there were uh, scenarios where they have expressed the consent or the expressed the requirement of having in the drug in a solution form. So they just have gone, uh, um, underwent, uh, have taken some experimental studies and they formulated a solution uh, elixir with the solution diethylene glycol was used okay and there were no toxicology studies uh, happened for that and they directly have given and it was marketed and, and given across uh, many uh, people over the country okay and it also caused to the uh, organ damages like kidney failure stoppage of urine nausea vomiting convulsions and it led to the death of many patients and somewhere in the 1950s, late uh, early 1915 to 1960s, uh, people were giving, uh, the physicians were prescribing thalidomide for, to treat the nausea and vomiting sensation in pe uh, pregnant women. Okay. And uh, as I said, there were no stringent rules and regulations and there were no uh, studies happening at that time. Right. And they just have given during somewhere in 1960s, it was identified that uh, all the patient, uh, all the pregnant women who have uh, been administered with this thalidomide has delivered the babies with birth defects, which is phocomelia, short limbs or sea limbs, uh, they are called. Uh, that was around 10,000 baby, uh, 10,000 uh, 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 delivered babies got affected with this. And for uh, about uh, four, four to five months after the birth, half of the uh, babies have died. Okay, this has, uh, uh, this is one of the disaster, human made medical disaster, I can say, during that time. Okay. All these things have triggered many regulatory bodies to come forward and uh, to implement and to structure a keen uh, and very stringent rules and regulations, okay, uh, especially in the EU countries, European regions. And when it comes to India, the PV got started somewhere in 2010 uh, 20, uh, uh, in the year uh, in collaboration with AIMS Delhi, but it was there from 170 years back itself but slowly it has been evolved and now it is fully structured and there are a lot many changes happening right now in the pharmacovigilance department okay now what are the aim and objectives of pharmacovigilance to identify and understand the risk associated with medicines early detection of adverse effects and interactions detection of an increase of the frequency of a adverse effect 
continuous re-evaluation of the risk-benefit balance of medicines. Medicines are used safely and to ensure that medicines are used safely and effectively. Okay. Now, you might be knowing uh, people will have a misconception that the PV of the drug gets started once it is released into the market, that is after uh, the phase three studies, right? But we do have the pharmacovigilance during the uh, clinical trials in the phase one, phase two, phase three studies also. There are clinical trial cases which we receive, okay? And also there is a animal pharmacovigilance happening for the testing that are happening on the animals, which is at the preclinical stage, okay? The PV exists as long as the drug is in the market, the PV of the product also will be there. It has to be continuously tracked, monitored and checked for all the effects that are going on with respect to that product. Okay, that is very much required to identify the safety profile of the drug. Always when we speak about pharmacovigilance, it's all about the balance between risk and benefit. Okay, the risk should be minimal and the benefits of the product should be high. Then only the product can withstand in the market. Otherwise, that may require to get withdrawn from the market. Okay, the uh, basically the pharma companies may not be receiving. Uh, I mean to say they spend crores of rupees in having the pharmacovigilance uh, conducted for their products because it is very important for them to uh, submit all the safety profile of the drugs to the regulatory authorities and it is very much required for them to do this to withstand their product to have their product running in the market okay if at all if it is observed and proved that the drug is a culprit and having lot many fetal or uh, uh, lethal uh, issues that may be required to withdraw from the market also okay so that is uh, about it and these are uh, moving to the next slide yeah, you might be knowing, I need not to explain in detail about the uh, trials and the drug discovery process, lead, target identification, lead optimization, then going ahead with preclinical studies, phase one, phase two, phase three studies, after uh, having the animal studies preclinical, if you have the certain data and uh, if you have positive results, then we may go ahead and start uh, the testing on the uh, humans, which is clinical trials phase one. Okay, we would be doing it on healthy volunteers in a population of uh, basically 20 to 30. Um, when it comes to phase two, uh, phase one, the main uh, motto to have the phase one is to ensure the safety and tolerability of the drug. When it comes to phase two, see, to see the efficacy of the drug. And uh, uh, if we get a positive results, we may move on to phase three. Phase three, which is a please please let me know if i am going very fast or if you want me to slow down okay uh, please try, uh, feel free to interrupt me if you have any questions in between okay yeah phase 3 is the multi centric trial okay the uh, there will be different uh, centers or the sites where the phase 3 will be conducted that's the reason it is said to be multi centric trial to confirm to have the safety and tolerability and to confirm the efficacy that we are looking for will be taken care in the phase three. Okay. And when it is released after phase three, it will go for uh, the NDA application. Once it gets approved, then it will be released into the market, which is phase four post-marketing surveillance. Okay. It is very much required when it comes to phase three, we does these uh, studies on very limited population and we may not cover all the areas of the population like uh, pediatric, pediatric uh, patients and there may be lot many changes that may need to see kind of drug interactions and ethnicity, race of the people as the drug is going to hit crores of people across the world, we may expect lot many issues coming up. So it is very much required to start monitoring the drug. Okay. Now, I'll give you a brief idea on what happens in the pharmacovigilance. Yeah, case input. There will be certain uh, ICSR, you might be knowing, individual case safety reports. That's all about the patient individual reports that we receive. Okay, there all, also there will be a domain or a, a category or a section like MICC, which is a voice pharmacovigilance process. Okay, they'll be getting the reports okay information about their uh, drugs 
and clinical trial cases, spontaneous cases. The source of the spontaneous cases may be anywhere through kind of media, social media, anything, uh, any format. We do not have any structured format to have the spontaneous reports. And it comes to literature search, various uh, search engine, uh, by using various search engines, they'll pull the data from the various uh, journals and uh, articles and they will start looking into those areas and whatever the studies that are happening on that particular products are kind of uh, uh, that may be some kind of uh, testings or academic uh, research works going on all the publications will be pulled related to the particular product from that using the search engines okay um, from the journals like pubmed and all these things then they will go for literature screening process once the literature screening process is done there will be a certain particular section where all these activities will be taken care with respect to these literature cases literature screening uh, happens there once they see uh, that uh, the case is going to be valid according to that the case will be pushed for case creation uh, the valid cases then the icsr comes into picture when this is all about the literature cases okay once the case uh, when it comes to the argus database we say is it as case intake or book in uh, based on the initial uh, information and validity uh, as i said i am not going to take you into detailed terminology or description and i don't want to confuse you i'm just sticking to the overview perspective uh, from my side okay the case will be booked okay they'll check for the validity for a case to be valid uh, i think nowadays uh, the pharmacovigilance is part of the curriculum uh, for uh, the final year students if i am not wrong you might be knowing what is the minimum requirement for a case to be valid there should be a patient event identifiable reporter and a drug for a case to be valid right once uh, all the information is checked and the case is meeting the criteria they will go ahead and book the case and once the case is booked okay uh, they'll check for uh, the additional information if there is existing case in the database and all the kind of uh, stuff then the argus id the case id gets generated the actual during the case process this is the area where the data entry or actual case process takes place which involves triage data entry okay once the triage and data entry process is done that will be moving to the further step which is quality review process there will be certain people who will be performing the quality review of the case okay according to the sops and the work instructions and all the data which is filled in uh, by the data entry processor would be cross-checked with respect to the source document if there are any issues then post the quality review happens that will be moving to the medical review area in the medical review we will be having the physicians over there there will be certain fields which will be taken care by the physicians there they will be looking for the causality of the drug reporter causality company causality and the kind of uh, labeling assessments and uh, everything certain areas will be keenly looked by the physicians over there once it is uh, done with the medical review then further it will move for case submissions to the regulatory authorities also you might have heard different areas or the domains within the pharmacovigilance like aggregate report signal detection i'll i'll tell you all those areas lot many areas are there in within the pharmacovigilance as per your interest you can move into various domains within pharmacovigilance also aggregate is report is nothing but they will uh, uh, it is something i can say yeah i anyways i'll be covering about that in the further slide <laughs> okay this is how the workflow happens okay now various domains within pharmacovigilance these are the few which i have uh, jotted down okay there are many other uh, which we can be knowing about okay safety signal management first i said i would suggest all the resources all the uh, students who are aspiring to get into the pharmacovigilance domain they will be getting into icsr roles okay once they get certain experience on the icsr processing for one or two years and they get a thorough knowledge on that accordingly they can look for a vertical growth or a horizontal growth if it is related to subject uh, matter expert related kind of growth people may choose some other options like aggregate reporting signal management 
okay and now there is also a medical device pharmacology which is, which is called as material vigilance okay which will have all the uh, medical device related issues uh, getting reported over there this is the first one individual case report icsrs okay post that based on the area of interest you can move into various domains like call center there will be a voice process pv also as i said earlier in the previous slide okay and also let's say for example few might be very much interested in moving to some kind of it domain with the skill set and the knowledge of the pharmacovigilance and the life science skill set whatever we have we can move into the it domain also where we would be supporting on safety database related issues okay we may not be doing the coding over there or something like that but if there is some issue technical issue coming in we'll be raising a ticket that will be taken care by the back end support who all uh, database administrators database developers kind of thing will be uh, people will be working at the back end to have this database working with no issues okay P, uh, the student um, the people who are aspiring to get into the IT roles also can go and uh, establish their career very well over there into the IT domain. There, it would be very much uh, required for a candidate with all this knowledge skill set uh, with uh, getting into the area of IT would be required. Whereas, uh, if we take the profession uh, like BTEC uh, students or BTEC professionals, they may not have all these kind of medical terminology, knowledge and all this stuff, right? People with whatever the skill set we have and getting into IT professions would really uh, fetch a lot uh, if, you, uh, if anyone is really looking into that area sir, to grab those uh, uh, opportunities, okay? Now, literature monitoring and media monitoring such. These are the some of the areas where uh, the students can uh, move into uh, within the pharmacovigilance. Okay. Now, uh, in the next slide, I will be telling you, th these are the few companies which I have uh, brought in uh, for your reference, uh, which will be providing the pharmacovigilance services. Okay, if it is a core pharmaceutical companies, few core pharmaceutical companies operate their drug safety domain on their own. Okay, with a certain set of people like 20, 30 or 50 or 100, whatever, a small uh, pharmacovigilance uh, drug safety services domain will be set up in there and they will be taking care of uh, their product related uh, uh, drug safety issues, okay, by themselves. But a larger companies, what they would be doing is they will be managing with a few people over there and there will be vendor managers and the maximum stake of the drug safety related work will be outsourced to the IT companies because they are very much, uh, they have a lot of experience in handling, in providing the drug safety services and they have very well proven uh, records of handling the drug safety uh, related services like Cognizant, Accenture, TCS, okay, and like CROs like Sinios and uh, Quinexa, LabCorp, Paraxel, and few pharma companies which they maintain their drug safety within the uh, their company itself like Arabindo, okay, uh, all these. Uh, also, there are a lot many startup companies have uh, come in the recent one two years okay where they will be providing all the clinical services to the pharmaceutical companies with the services like drug safety regulatory affairs cdm okay and uh, within the drug safety aggregate reports signal detection rmp evaluations okay uh, these are all the services which the companies are providing to the various pharmaceutical companies okay there are a lot many more. These are a few which I have uh, brought in uh, for your uh, knowledge and the reference. Okay. Now, let me speak about the uh, future prospects of pharmacovigilance. Okay. Now, uh, if at the time of uh, my career start, the things were different. Down the line after 10 years, 
lot many things got changed lot many things got evolved within the pharmacovigilance okay now they are going for cloud based reporting procedures in the drug safety where it will be very secured and the access related issues will not be there where the clients and uh, the service providers can access all the data and uh, day by day the storage requirements and the data related things are going high okay uh, that's the reason they are moving on to cloud based reporting procedures and also artificial intelligence is coming up when it comes to icsr individual case safety reports uh, the change is what i have seen in the recent years or during this 10 years is <laughs> you might have seen e2b you might have heard e2b reports okay uh, where the source document will be configured as per the database requirements okay all the information from the source document will be directly fetched into the relevant fields of the database on its own okay but it's not it cannot be taken as granted but the case processor uh, or the drug safety professionals would be cross checking for the few changes and everything but it has brought down the efforts of the drug safety professionals okay maybe uh, i can say r3 reports r2 reports kind of stuff okay and also there are bots involved in performing the book in process nowadays okay uh, in many of the companies the book in is taken place with the help of the bots okay uh, where uh, all the book in process will be taken care by the bots post that the data entry actual case processing activity will be taken by, by humans okay and there are lot many uh, technology wise there are lot many advances going on we never know how it would be changing but also there are few things which a artificial intelligence cannot replace okay niche skills those are called as um, i'll i'll let you know about that uh, and also various healthcare applications are coming up which is uh, more user friendly to collect the data from the reporting systems uh, and technology advancements are happening with the support of the IT. Okay, when it comes to literature search, there will be tools like Litrace, Lit, uh, Litpro kind of things. Lot many uh, works are going on in that area also to minimize the human efforts. Okay, recent advancements in ICSR. That's what I said. E2B reports and bots process, uh, bots doing the booking of the cases and all this, and. There are, as I was telling you, there are few areas where the artificial intelligence cannot replace the human efforts are like aggregate reporting, signal detection, medical writing. These are all called as niche skills means if the demand is for 10 people, we will be getting only two, three people in the uh, two, three, uh, two to three persons in the market just for an example if i require 10 people for a with a skill set of aggregate reporting but i may end up getting only two three persons okay and no artificial intelligence or technology can replace these areas okay the human intervention and the human efforts are very much required this is something a different skill set like medical writing and aggregate reporting areas okay so I will give you an example, though I am saying a lot many changes has happened as long as we are upskilling ourselves, as long as we are meeting and changing ourselves and modifying ourselves according to the requirements of the market, we do not, uh, we, it is not required for us to worry about. Okay. If you take an example, earlier there were no vehicles, right? People used to use for the transport mode only the bullock cards right and all of a sudden when uh, the bikes motor vehicles started coming up they they would have worried how are we going to do all these uh, bikes and automobiles has been growing right later we have seen the they might have seen the requirement of laying of the roads painting the roads kind of stuff there is a lot many work got created right again they got into if that, that's what I am saying, 
though the technology changes, some are the other way. Uh, if we keep on upskilling ourselves to the requirements of the market, we need not to worry. Your career would be evergreen. Okay. But we need to ensure that we are upskilling ourselves and changing, modifying according to the needs of the market, market requirement. Okay. Now, moving on to next slide. These are the few questions which I have jotted down that may trigger from your minds uh, at the level you are in uh, from the student's perspective. Okay. I'll try to explain, answer these questions uh, very briefly. Okay. Post that. If you have any further questions, please try to uh, ping me over the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask. I would be very happy to uh, help you out on that, assist you on that. Okay. Yeah. Qualification requirements when it comes to pharmacovigilance, uh, like PharmDs, BPharm, MPharm, BDS, MDS, MBBS, MD Pharmacology. And there are few, as per the client requirements, there are few life sciences domains like B-Tech biotechnology and some microbiology kind of stuff. Uh, the people also have chances to enter, but the, uh, the chances of the basic life sciences people getting into this profession would be uh, very less, I would say. And the normal life sciences graduates can enter into CDM profiles also where, where uh, mm, clinical data management areas okay the skill set required here would be yeah as i said uh, now the pharmacovigilance has been incorporated into your curriculum you know the basics and and you might have got some idea now how it is going to be okay accordingly from a fisher uh, what we would be expecting is how confidently you communicate uh, how, what kind of thorough knowledge you have with respect to your academics, pharmacology related, okay? And as you are going to aspire for this, your career in this domain, what kind of basic knowledge you have or the understanding you have on the pharmacovigilance, okay? And few may have the question like, is it going to be a long-term career or short-term career? If I start with pharmacovigilance, May I need to end up my career in, in the coming three, four years? No. As I said, as long as you are upskilling yourself according to the needs, you need not to. You can for sure take it as 20 to 25 years of healthy growth, healthy career if you are really want to excel in this career option. Okay. Will I have the overseas opportunities with PV experience? Obviously, sometimes, but I would say very less. Maximum uh, rest of the world countries are try providing or outsourcing the pharmacovigilance services to India. We are all doing it from India, but there will be chances where you can travel to abroad also as per the client requirements. Okay, What would be the initial compensation? Okay, that differs from company to company. I would say that is a not too low. It's a good uh, figure like uh, 2.8 lakhs per annum, 3.2 lakhs per annum, 3.4, some may give uh, 3.4 at the starting phase. Okay, gradually uh, you, as you grow and as you will uh, excel and as you improve your competencies and the skill sets, you will be growing in the career. Do I need to do any certifications course to enter PB? Yeah, this is one of the questions many people will be having. Okay, basically I can say no, but still if someone is going to provide you with a basic knowledge, which is required for a fresher to crack the interview, please uh, you can go ahead and do it or you can do the research and prepare on your own also but you may not be knowing what is the exact expectation what they may what kind of questions they may pose and kind of uh, stuff okay for this if someone and i would suggest you not to spend a lot of money on certification courses that's useless for a fresher to get in the expectations will be very minimal 
how is your communication how thorough on your academic knowledge how how thorough on your uh, you are on basic uh, terminology and the basic knowledge related to pharmacovigilance these are the main areas they would be looking into to take a fresher if someone is going to provide you with this uh, kind of knowledge with a certain amount you can go ahead and do it that's not a problem that will really fetch you okay but i would suggest not to go with the higher amounts do not spend a lot of amount for these certifications okay and because uh, there is also a disadvantage if you go in that way okay they may say that three months of uh, uh, clinical research course or a diploma hello sir yeah sir Something that a uh, little bit louder, sir. Oh, sorry, sir. Uh, is ah. this is it fine now, sir? Ah, yes, sir. Okay, okay. Sir. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I was discussing about certification, right? Yeah, there is also a disadvantage, as I was telling you, not to spend a lot of amount on mm -hmm. certifications. It's not required uh, for you to get uh, with the minimal knowledge. If someone is going to with the minimal amount, please do that. Also. If you go with a certification course with long term and lot of amount, uh, if they are charging more, that's going to be useless for you. I'll tell you how. Okay, if it is going to be three months course or six months PG diploma course somewhere, okay, where they will be maybe teaching you more detail about database and everything, then the expectations to an interview from your side, if you're saying six months PG diploma something, will be very high and you may not be able to crack or satisfy to their level that may end up rejecting so i would suggest not to opt that kind of courses it's not required for a fresher okay the basic information basic knowledge would be more than enough for a fresher to get in okay yeah is it a desk job same as it professions yes it's a desk job you will be working by sitting at one corner of the house or office wherever and you will be working on the computer okay uh, will there be work from home options you might be knowing during the pandemic it's been uh, i can say it's been more than two and a half year uh, i didn't uh, go to office i'm just working from home now slowly as we are back to new normal now all maximum major number of companies are going operating in hybrid model two days in office three days at home okay or three days at home and two days in office whatever hybrid model is going on now and there are also few companies which can give complete work from home also there are few companies i said the sign news right it is one of the company uh, which got moved into completely home based now all the resources would be completely working from home okay uh, these are all the changes which has happened uh, due to this uh, covid okay yeah fine that's all the things from my side i hope many questions that were triggering in the students minds have been answered if you mm -hmm. still if you still have any questions I'll pause here uh, and please go ahead. I'll I'll allow you here for some time. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to assist you. Yeah, please. Any questions from anyone? You can use the chat box also. I see there are two sir okay this is something okay fine uh, yeah any questions if you have any question please use the chat box i'd be happy to assist you uh we'll stay here for uh two to three more minutes if you have any questions please feel free to ask do not hesitate please remember that i am not here to judge any one of the students whatever the silliest question you have, whatever the question you have, please feel free to ask. Okay. I'm just to, here to educate you, to create some kind of awareness on this pharmacovigilance. So please feel free to ask any question. I'm not here to 
judge, I'm here to assist you. Okay, we'll wait for one more minute. Any questions from anyone, please? And also, I would suggest not to take uh, to get in or uh, take it as granted to get into pharmacovigilance. Just blindly do not get into that. There are a lot many career options which are very good, like medical writing, regulatory affairs, CDM is also good. Okay. Uh, there are, uh, it's not only pharmacovigilance. I, I'm not saying that. Okay. There will be ups and downs with respect to the markets and everything. But yeah, pharmacovigilance is obviously a very good profession for you to excel. But it is not going to be, please do not think that this is the only option for the B form or M form guys. There are a lot many options where you can excel better. Okay. Yeah. Meanwhile, any questions from anyone? Sir, one student posted in the chat yeah. box. Sure, sure. Is it necessary to take medical writing course before applying? Okay. Fine. Medical writing course, it's not required for a fresher to get in. As I said, uh, uh, see, you can get into medical writing with having a brief knowledge and the basic knowledge about it, what happens over there and that should be more than enough for you to get in. Uh, one thing all the students should be knowing here is it's not that as soon as you get into an organization, you will be asked to start uh, doing the work as per the requirements of the project. No, I'll take example of pharmacovigilance or medical writing. They, they will be client based trainings, instructed led trainings. Okay. Post that there will be organization level trainings. All that has to be completed. That may take three, four, five, six months as per the career uh, structure of uh, the project. Okay. As per the structure and the requirements of the project. Okay. Within that six months, you will be getting trained over there. Post that, you will you need to clear an assessment. Okay, once uh, the particular trainer or the project manager or the team lead, whatever, feels that they are once they are confident enough on the candidate based on the assessment scores and everything, then when it comes to pharmacovigilance, you will be given with a database which is a dummy database. Okay, where you will be processing few cases, there will be a mentor or the trainer assigned to you. They'll be cross-checking, they'll be monitoring you, they'll be assisting you in all the activities you do. Once you are done with that, you will be given with, uh, you will be provided with production access. In the production access also, there will be a certain mentorship phase. Okay. During the mentorship phase, you will do the cases, you will process the cases or you will write the things on your own, but still you will be under the monitor of the mentors. Okay. Once you are actually signed off for a particular process, signed off means now I am, uh, it is proved that I have this skill set, I have cleared this assessment and I have the documentation in place. I have all the required uh, documents in place to show to the client that you are uh, competent enough to perform the job. Then only you will be going on to the floor. Okay. So you need not to worry. You don't require any course as such. Okay, still you can do some kind of uh, research on this, what would be, what it would be there and what kind of, generally, basically I can say, yeah, BDS, MDS professions and uh, especially healthcare professionals only like B-Form, Form D and M-Form and BDS, MDS and like uh, also BAMS, BHMS, uh, doctors and all these people will be getting into this profession of uh, medical writing and I would say it is not required. Hope I have answered your question uh, Nagaishwarya. Any, any further questions please? Sir, what are the basic requirements sir, at college level to join in the pharmacovigilance? Yes sir, uh, that's what I was saying. Uh, a basic a good knowledge on pharmacology. 
with respect okay. to the drugs and few uh, mechanism of actions, drugs and the classifications that should be more than enough and how, how good they are with respect to the communication skills which, which is very much required and uh, are they aware of the basic knowledge on pharmacovigilance that may be what is adverse event what is adverse drug reaction what is seriousness criteria what is hospitalization means what is the challenge rechallenge what is uh, labeling uh, what is narrative writing uh, what kind of uh, medra or what is the current phase of medra these are the basic terminology or the knowledge that is required or that they expect from a uh student who is aspiring a career into pharmacovigilance these uh basic terminology and the basic knowledge and the good thorough knowledge on pharmacology aspects and a good communication uh this would be more than enough i can say for a fresher to crack the interview and get into pharmacovigilance domain yes sir, sir uh, is there any possibility next time we will arrange an offline mode sir Sure, sir. Uh, sure. I would be happy to visit. Uh, uh, please uh, do let me know uh, in advance, well in advance, so that okay, I can plan and confirm to you accordingly, sir. Yes, sir. If, if it is an offline mode means uh, very helpful for the students, sir. Yeah, they can yeah. directly interact with you, sir. I agree. I agree with that, sir. Yeah. So, uh, uh, if you can let me know well in advance, sir, accordingly, I can plan and uh, we together can do that. For sure. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. Any further questions, please? Okay, fine. Also, uh, I would let you know or uh, give a information on the training uh, institute that we have launched very recently okay and we have been training the uh, providing the training and consultancy services to various uh, students across as i was saying what is basically required for a student uh, who is out of college and looking for uh, the career in that may be in pharmacovigilance sas cdm medical writing or medical coding whatever okay we would be uh, making the candidate ready from in in these areas particularly whichever i have been telling what is actually required from what the industry expects expects from a candidate we'll be thoroughly making them ready on these aspects and they'll be going ahead and doing uh, preparing their uh, cv or the resume as per the needs of the uh, uh, as per the requirements of the organizations accordingly they'll be confident enough to crack the interviews and get into the profession okay and uh, with your uh, permission sir uh, uh, the students can make a note of uh, the, uh, the number provided over there or uh, you can reach out uh, through your lecturers or the principal sir uh, from your college uh, reach out to me through them uh, i would be uh, happy to assist you people it's uh, offline training sir online training sir. online sir and if at all, if someone is uh, willing to have it offline in the Hyderabad, uh, uh, accordingly based on the number of uh, students or the resources, so we can accommodate offline also. That's not a problem. Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, that's all the things, sir, uh, from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for accepting our invitation. We all are happy have you as a resource person in this webinar. Everyone participated in this webinar gained the knowledge on pharmacovigilance, drug safety services, especially that Kochnir is very useful for the, all the students who, who want to join in the pharmacovigilance field. Thank you, sir, for giving this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. It's my pleasure uh, to be part of this webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we can go to the third talk with uh, Mr. A. Jairam Redigaru. And I request Mrs. Prupamayi, Madam, to introduce the resource person, Mr. A. Jairam Redigaru. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, respected principal, Madam, resource persons. 
faculty and all the participants of today national webinar myself g krupamayi assistant professor in the department of pharmaceutical chemistry vijaya institute of pharmaceutical sciences for women first of all i would like to express my gratitude to our respected principal madam for giving me this opportunity now i take this opportunity to introduce the profile of today's resource person and organizer of this today national webinar mr ambala jairam reddy sir currently working as associate professor in the department of pharmacology vijaya institute of pharmaceutical sciences for women sir has completed his bachelor of pharmacy from wells college of pharmacy chennai and completed masters in pharmacy in the department of pharmacology from anamalai university chennai presently sir is pursuing his phd from jawaharlal nehru technological university kakinada and doing research on anti ulcer and anti diabetic activity of some indigenous medicinal plants sir has joined our institution vijaya institute of pharmaceutical sciences for women in the year 2011 and since then sir has proved himself as a man of excellency not only in academics but also in non academic works concerning the growth of the organization sir is a active member of cpsca committee disciplinary committee and anti ragging cell sir is also the programming officer for nss unit of our college sir is the honorable secretary of indian pharmaceutical association nk padu local branch vipw sir is having various memberships life member in association of pharmaceutical teachers of india apti life member in indian pharmaceutical association ipa life member in association of pharmacy professionals app sir has received various awards received best performer award from association of pharmacy professionals app in the year 2021 received best service award from vipw in the year 2022 sir is also the in charge of training and placement cell of the college sir holds a teaching experience of 15 years and has attended various national and international conferences and has published research papers in various reputed journals sir has guided many students of b pharma and m pharma to complete their projects successfully on topics of current relevance and trends sir is committed individual with a constant drive and zeal to work for the growth of the organization sir is capable of doing multi tasks works with motivation and above all he is teacher par excellency for to for today's session sir is going to share his knowledge on alternatives to animal toxicity testing with this brief introduction I feel privileged to welcome Mr. A. Jairam Reddy sir for today's session to deliver his talk on alternatives to animal toxicity testing. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam, for introducing me with the nice profile. just a minute
ఫస్ట్ యూ ఓపెన్ ద పిపిటి అన్న దెన్ యు కెన్ షేర్ ఇస్ ఇట్ విజిబుల్ యా ఇట్స్ విజిబుల్ గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ టు వన్ అండ్ ఆల్ సో టుడే వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కసింగ్ అబౌట్ ద ఆల్టర్నేటివ్స్ టు ఎనిమల్ టాక్సిటీ టెస్టింగ్ సో బిఫోర్ వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కసింగ్ అబౌట్ ది ఎనిమల్ టాక్సిటీ టెస్టింగ్ సో మేజర్లీ వెన్ యూఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు యూజింగ్ ద ఎనిమల్స్ సో విచ్ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు హ్యుమెనీ ఇన్ కైండ్ బట్ ద ఎనిమల్స్ ఆర్ విచ్ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు సఫర్స్ లాక్ so especially during experimentation but when you are going for the toxicity studies so most of the animals so which are going to shows it's a due to its a toxic effects and which are going to produce the several complications in their physiological systems but the animals cannot able to express it but the animals cannot able to express it so based on that uh, uh, we, are, we are going to give some of the a uh, brief explanation about the different procedures without using the animals and we can able to perform the certain toxicity test certain toxicity test so first uh, first of all what is mean by alternative methods so alternative is nothing but without using the animals or sometimes we may be using the uh, implementation of the some of the test the either it may be in vitro or you have to use the animals we are going to use the very less number of animals so the alternative met, uh, methods is nothing but the animals are testing with the development of and implementation of test method that avoid the use of live animals so if we are going to using the live animals we have to use the very less in number so that we can able to uh, reduce the usage of the animals especially in the toxicity studies so as per the uh, guidelines or either it may be a certain uh, uh, indian penal code systems so they are given the specific directives directions from the councils from the councils like uh, cpcsa or it may be a some other uh, regulatory guidelines so they are giving that uh, the protection of animals used for experimentation and scientific purpose in article 23 so what they da- they are given so the commission and member states that they encourage the research but we cannot able to stop the research but the research and development and the validation of alternative methods so that means so whatever the methods are there that should be validated so that means uh, the validation in the sense we are going to giving the the perfection or it may be a, the uh, quality so that is uh, the validation we are going to maintain by using the various alternative method so then uh, we can able to assess the toxicity of the any test compounds or either it may be any existing compounds uh, which can able to produce the uh, which can able to produce the uh, the maximum uh, reduction in the uses of the animals so then we could provide the same level of information so as like whatever the experimentation or the toxicity responses we are going to getting from the animals the same we can able to getting from the uh, this uh, uh in vitro methods or it may be some alternative methods whatever are going to use that uh, obtain a experiment using the animals but which involves the very less animals so then uh, whatever the positive responses or it may be negative responses so we are going to getting the positive responses so the positive responses we can able to go for the toxicity testing with the less number of animals as well as so if it is going to producing the negative results in the alternative methods so we can able to avoid the uses of the particular uh, animals in the toxicity testing in the toxicity testing so then here what are the alternative methods can able to do that so one is the reduce the another one is refine the another one is replace and the another one is rehabilitation so usually in previous days so we are having only the three r's reduce refinement and replace so now they are included that the rehabilitation so whatever the animals we are going to use for the toxicity testing toxicity testing so if the animal is going to survive so we have to rehabilitate the particular animal and we have to bring into the normal condition so that we are going to call it as uh, we are going to call it as 4r principles so 
only previous days they are going to using the three r principles that we are going to call it as only the reduce refinement and the replacement of the enamels so that we are going to discuss later so then so what are the reasons for the uh, alternative to the enamel toxicity testing so when you are going to using the number of enamels the use number of enamels and they are going to produce the more economic and the efficiency also they are going to play a key role but we are going to uh, using the large number of enamels that large number of enamels may uh, uh, produce the uh, ecological imbalance so that is the reason so economically it is more costly and along with the econo uh, ecological imbalance also may be possible in future so then only the efficiency is possible so that is the reason so two major advantages we can able to improve the economic consideration and as well as the ecological balance so that is the need for alternative to the animal toxicity testing so then another one is the in vitro toxicity testing and provide the toxicity information with less cost effective and time saving manner also so then uh, when you are going to inducing this uh, test substances into the animals so generally that animals uh, which may takes the long time for its toxic responses based upon the the test compound but when you are going to using this test substances in in vitro manner we can able to get the with less cost effective and sometimes the time same time saving also so this can also increase the efficiency of whole study and decrease the number of enamels which is required for the toxicity so that's what already i said so that uh, here uh, we are going to increase the efficiency or we can able to use the more samples in in vitro study and whenever we are going to getting the efficiency of the particular test compound and so that only that particular dose can able to used for the uh, on enamels and so that we can able to reduce the number of enamels so then in vitro testing human cell lines have been useful for securing the relevant information for human risk assessment thereby opening up you uh, opportunities to explore the responses to existing and emerging therapies human cell lines can be used for the uh, tests on some other chronic diseases so here uh, that is majorly we are going to call it as so tumor and some other chronic diseases so here already uh, uh, morning we are discussed so especially in cancer research so that means on the cancer research means so instead of using into the directly into the patient so initially we are going to uh, using we are going to taking some of the cell lines and that is zeno drugs and directly we can able to uh, identify the uh, both the toxicity as well as the efficacy by using the cell lines so then uh, needs for the alternatives so why we have to go for the another uh, alternative for this uh, method so majorly here there are uh, two possibilities are there uh, there are five possibilities sometimes whatever the animals are going to use it so as i shown in the uh, here uh, in the image the right side so that is a microorganism so we can able to collect the cell cultures from the various microorganisms directly we are going to finding the toxicity either the particular uh, uh, microorganisms are going to died with the extracts or not so then acute toxicity studies and the another one is here we are going for the different methods but these methods we are going to use a large number of animals for uh, the level of dose determination itself so then uh, finally instead of that we are going to taking the intoxication index so then uh, followed by we are going to getting the validation of the particular test comp so this is the, uh, generally what the toxicity and pathogenicity of the biocontrol agents that is nothing but the xenobiotics so then here the needs for the alternative methods so sometimes whatever the animals we are going to 
uh, using for the test study that is most of them are healthy volunteers or healthy animals but this animals are shown their uh, toxic effects uh, if the food are in maybe water or in maybe some the environmental conditions which may have the toxic responses or toxic components in the environment and which may leads to the poison and it may alters its effect so then the deprived food and water food water and sleep so for example already we know so if the animals are not uh, 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 not uh, taking for the food or water or maybe sleep during the studies so that may also which may alter its effects so then the rus uh, applied with skin or eye irritants so that also which may shows its a uh, alternate uh, uh, toxicity effects in the body and sometimes it may not recover it and they may use for some other studies and it may be leads to the uh, some uh, improper results so that is the need uh, we have to go for the alternative method subjected to psychological stress so because some of the environmental conditions or it may be the handling techniques or either it may be some uh, uh, other factors and uh, which may leads to the psychological stress by the animals automatically which may also alter the response then the deliberately infected with infected disease so if the animal is having already the talk uh, the infection and which may also alters its response so that is the need uh, we have to go for the alteration of the uh, alternative methods we have to choose so generally already i said so the three r's so reduce refine and replace so this has been established in 1959 by wms russell and rl goods which is subjected to the three r principles especially for humane experimental techniques so we are going to use the various docile animals here so then that animals we are going to use for the various experimentation purpose so but uh, initially they said only the reduce refine and the another one is rehabilitate oh, sorry replace so next uh, followed by the another one is uh, later on it has been converted into the four r principles so that is uh, already i said so the replacement reduction refinement the another one is rehabilitate so here in the mark which is showing that is the rehabilitation green mark so that is a increased arrow mark so that we can able to reduce the uses of the animals and when we are going to using the alternative methods and which are going to uh, reduce the utilization of the animals in the toxicity studies so here what is mean by replace so that means avoid or replace the use of animal so if possibility is are there so we have to replace or avoid the animal or we have to replace the animal during the studies so then another one reduction the minimize the number of animals and the another one is refinement so then uh, already i said the the term alternative used for the those techniques or methods to replace the use of the laboratory animals all together reduce the number of animals required or techniques minimize the levels of stress induced by the animal so once whatever the techniques we are going to use it so automatically all the three hours which can able to upcoming it so then generally when we are going to greatly reduce the number of animals needed the refined protocols can improve the design efficacy and quality of studies and lessen stress and discomfort of experienced by the lab animals so when you are going to using that uh, the alternative techniques automatically we can able to uh, refine the protocols so that means uh, the in vitro methods we can able to uh, include it then based on that we are going for the dose determination along with that the with the design the efficiency and quality of the studies so with the uh, less number of animals and meantime when you are going to using the less number of animals automatically the lessen stress on the used animals as well as the discomfort experienced by the lab animals so here always the alternative methods the field of alternative study particularly especially the in vitro toxicology has evolved into the respected disciplines 
and attracting the competent and motivated scientists around the world. So, whenever you are going to performing this uh, in vitro studies, so in vitro studies, so automatically there is a less number of animals who are going to use, and automatically which can this discipline can able to in vitro toxicology can able to motivated by the other people by reducing the number of animals. It is not possible to replace, for example, if there is no not possible to replace the animal, but the animal model with in vitro system to evaluate the drug effect on the major organ system. So here that means the if it is not possible to uh, replace the animal or reduce the animal or it may be a, the refinement of the animal. So <laughs> with single animal, single animal and we can able to go for the multiple cell lines or it may be a cell cultures we are going to use to evaluate the drug effect on the major organ system. So by using the specific components. <clears throat> but here we can able to continue with it based on three uh, our principles. So that is one is the refinement. So decrease the unnecessary pain and trauma to animals. So how we can able to go for the refinement that I will tell you later on slides. Then another one is reduction. So reduce the number of uh, animals used in these experiments if possible. Then another one is replacement, sorry, the replacement. So the replacement of the experiments that is uh, majorly, especially during the studies or uh, the during learning study, uh, level, we can able to go for the different methods like computer simulation methods or other in vitro methods or it may be cell culture techniques. So first one is uh, how we can able to go for the refinement. So as I shown in the uh, images, so first one is uh, the uh, we have to use a very low dose or it may be a small dose so that uh, the animal will feel comfort before they are going to getting their toxic effects. So then another one is uh, the well or even maybe uh, improving housing condition. So always we, the animal should not feel the stress during the experimentation, we have to provide the common environment for their natural life. Then another one is uh, we have to use the uh, uh, pain relievers. So if the animal feels the pain, we have to use the analgesic. When you have to sacrifice things, we need to go for the anesthetics and we have to use some tranquilizers or sedatives if any neurological studies. So then by changing, so uh, these are the general procedures we are going to follow. So one is the by changing the procedure, the like uh, instead of uh, uh, histopathological examination, we can able to go for some uh, non-invasive techniques like uh, uh, MRI. So usually in uh, olden days, when you are going for the uh, determination of blood pressure, especially in uh, uh, rats or maybe a dog, so we have to sacrifice and we have to cannulate that particular uh, instruments and that uh, we are going to transferring into the uh, uh, surgical procedure. So this and all it may feels the animal feels may feels more pain and uh, it, it will feel the discomfort. Now it has been converted into the invasive techniques are there like MRI. So uh, as shown in the morning uh, Saibar has shown the some of the instrumentation like scanning procedures under for tumor evaluation. So like that there are several instruments as has been arrived into the market and that so that the animal cannot able to feel the pain as well as the distress and use less sensitive animal species. So less sensitive. So that means it can able to tolerate for certain conditions or certain time so that we can able to use it and we have to use the smaller doses as well as the we have to provide the natural environment so that the animal will feel the uh, uh, comfortness while surviving. So then uh, reduction, how we can able to reduce the animals. So one is a good planning of studies. So we have to refine, uh, that is the uh, uh, pro uh, protocol procedures. Then the experimental de uh, design. So then uh, instead of using the more than uh, 10 animals, we can able to proper utilization or proper designing of the experimental design and the improved method of data analysis like uh, statistical procedures and sharing the research animals from one group to the another group, if possible, 
redesigning of the studies if possible then the another one is uh, we have to collect the much information as much as possible before we are going to uh, conducting the experimentation we have to share the information to uh, more number of people so that we can able to design the proper uh, uh, procedure and either planning so that we can able to reduce the usage of the animals so then the last one is the replacement so we have to replace the higher animals with the lower animal so uh, in 90s uh, generally they are going to using the dogs for us uh, most of the experiment later on of frogs so instead of using the larger animals we have to use the lower animals so that is the uh, uh, like uh, rat mice or maybe uh, guinea pigs rabbits up to that so then replace live animals with uh, dummies for teaching and dissection purpose so that's what already what we are going to following now that is like uh, some uh, simulation experiments and all so absolute replacement so the absolute replacement means where they cannot able to use the animals no need of use to animals so there we can able to use like uh, cell lines uh, tissues or maybe human invertebrate cells and other tissues so the relative replacement so when you are going to performing a toxicity at final stage so either it may toxic to the human being such conditions we have to collect the certain animal cells or uh, or it may be the human cells that cells we have to converting into the uh, uh, converting into or transferring into the animals and followed by uh, that uh, the properties of the toxicity of the animal so to uh, toxic effect of the animal we have to determine it with uh, so that we can able to reduce the Uh, or replace the animals from directly killing of the human killing to the, so that we can able to prevent the human killing and we can able to use the less animals that less animals can able to uh, either it is going to producing the any major toxic effects in the uh, toxic effects in the animal so substitution are insistent material to place of uh, uh, consistent uh, higher animals so what are the in vitro models are possible for uh, reduction or uh, reduction of the uses of the animals so instead of using of the animals the cells and tissue cultures can be used to produce the uh, product ingredients that is the test substances so the cell cultures are, cultures are nowadays they are going to using the uh, repeatedly or routinely for uh, especially for cancers and other major chronic diseases then the another one is it can also grow in independent cell lines but uh, the entire organ or organ culture or maybe tissue culture so which can having the similar function so that functional units or functional cells and which can able to grow in the suitable media and directly the uh, unknown substances or maybe the existing drugs directly applying on that and is there any structural or functional changes in the individual uh, cells so the stem cells also are using for various in vitro models but here that is the ethical approvals are more important so then the source of uh, in vitro methods is uh, avian chick embryo for uh, stem cell studies or rodents that is a uh, uh, that is for cancer studies or some other chronic disease we are going to using rat mice the wild type or transgenic animals here the transgenic animals that is we are going to call it as uh, the genetic models the genetic diseases we are going to using transgenesis and embryonic level that is at the uh, postnatal level for uh, reproductive toxicity studies and adult human cells uh, also we are going to collecting from the uh, aborted fetus or it may be some uh, uh, cord blood cells uh, cord blood and directly that cells were going to growing in the suitable media and we are going to converting into the various toxicity studies so here uh, there are few test i was mentioned here that is uh, one is the in vitro test then another one uh, in vitro pyrogen test and the embryonic stem cells uh, and another one is uh, carcinogenicity and neurotoxicity studies also we are going to perform directly by using the various methods so already we know the pyrogen test means we are going to using the animals rabbits so if the sample may contains the pyrogenicity so the animal may produce the several toxic effects sometimes the animal may dies also so then another one is embryo embryonic stem cells are test also which will be used for the 
determination of uh, uh, reproductive toxicity then uh, generally we are going to use major toxicity studies that is uh, we are going to call it as uh, genotoxicity neurotoxicity nephrotoxicity and the another one is reproductive toxicity because uh, where the major areas which are going to produce which cannot able to regain or which cannot able to uh, come into the normal so such conditions uh, the major in vitro method for major toxicity studies also all of them which is having the in vitro methods so then uh, here we are going to using the tissue culture techniques also so this tissue culture techniques in vitro maintenance and propagation of isolated cells and tissues organs in appropriate artificial environment that already we know that is from the media so then where we can able to use this uh, animal cell cultures so instead of using the humans so animal cell cultures also can able to making into the toxicity testing like uh, then cancer research virology genetic engineering and gene therapy and drug screening as well as the in drug development process in the basic level itself so here that is the in vitro pyrogenicity test already we know here uh, that is the uh, number of uh, cellular assays which has developed but uh, generally uh, here we are going to using the lal test so lal test is nothing but limulus amebocyte lysate test so and along with that another one is monocyte activation test which is responsible for the inflammations then another one is a uh, uh, by replacing the animal rabbit pyrogen test olden days we are going to use this method the animal rabbit pyrogen test later on which are going to converting into the lal test and mono activation test all the test items are based on the response of human leukocytes that is primarily monocytes so either we are going to performing this experiment in uh, rabbits or either maybe uh, directly onto the human blood also so automatically which can able to produce the some uh, inflammatory reactions by the various endogenous pyrogens or it may be exogenous pyrogens so generally this will be happen in pyrogenicity so then that will be uh, without using the rabbits we can able to use this lal test or maybe monocyte activation test so how they are going to performing this monocyte activation test so generally we are going to taking the human mono uh, nuclear cells that is the monocyte is obtained from the human volunteers that is from the blood bank we are going to taking and this test is going to detects the pro inflammatory and pyrogenic contaminants not a uh, not always detected in the rabbit pyrogen test in the lal test so general government main just want to we are going to collecting the blood and we are going to applying the some test sample and we are going to determining the monocyte so is there any response so in like other information or maybe killing of the cells or decreasing the number of cells when we are going to comparing with the normal so automatically uh, if there is any changes in their uh, structure so automatically we can able to say that it is a pro inflammatory method or pro inflammatory responses that is due to some pyrogenetic uh, contaminants in the various uh, uh, various uh, uh, preparations so like uh, the preparations like uh, saline large volume preparations or maybe small volume injections and all so then uh, this uh, can be detected in the rabbit pyrogen test as well as in the lal test also so if uh, there is no positive response in the rabbit or it may be a lal test also uh, we can able to get this response directly from the monocyte activation test so this is a more sensitive test when compared to the lal test so then another one is uh, here we can able to looking into the diagram that is a uh, uh, already i said uh, uh, limulus uh, amebocyte and uh, lysate test so generally this how they are going to performing this so generally this uh, one of the antibody we are going to getting from the uh, limulus uh, amebocyte that is one of the crab we are going to call it as limulus polyphemus uh, so this uh, it is one of the harsh to crab so when you are going to looking into it is one of the crab and which can able to applying the sample into the uh, blood and along with that uh, the pyrogenicity of uh, the uh, compound the test compound when you are going to giving on that automatically it can able to respond to the pyrogenicity uh, pyrogenicity that means uh, 
there is a changes causes the extracellular coagulation of the blood extracellular coagulation of the blood so if the particular compound may contains the any uh, pyrogens or maybe toxins automatically which are going to produce the extracellular coagulation will be takes place that we are going to call it as hemolymph of the the uh, harsh crab limbless uh, polyphemus so when you are going to applying on that automatically the blood which are going to convert it into the coagulated so if it is coagulated that is due to the pyrogenicity so it is more sensitive than pyrogen than rabbit pyrogen test so then advantages sometimes it may get the false negative results also for certain products does not uh, detect the pyrogen other than the bacterial endotoxin only this will be used for only bacterial endotoxin especially that is a gram positive endotoxin of viruses as well as the fungi not for all the tests so a lal test has been developed but we are going to use it only for specific if the particular compound may contains the bacterial endotoxin especially gram positive endotoxins from the viruses as well as the fungi also but uh, when compared to this the mat uh, the monocyte activation test is more preferable nowadays for the alternative toxicity testing for pyrogenicity so another one is est embryonic stem cell test so in this method what they are going to do it so which develops the spontaneous uh, contracting myocardium of uh, different end points of the uh, prenatal differentiation of the embryonic stem cell used in the mouse that is the est are as follows so generally this will be used for the reproductive toxicity especially for the determination uh, at the prenatal itself so if the particular compounds are going to producing the any toxic effects especially on the fetus so here uh, the, uh, there are uh, uh, generally it will going to produce the two different types of effects the inhibition of differentiation of embryonic stem cells into the cardiac myocyte as well as the uh, cytotoxic effect in the embryonic cells and uh, 3t3 cells uh, fibroblast cells so in the what they are going to take so they are going to collecting the cell line from the uh, rodents that is uh, d3 cell lines so developed into the special side contracting heart cell that is into the we are going to call it as external environment so within 10 days which is can able to used for the access the embryonic potential of the test compound light microscopic evaluation so and then we are going to finding the molecular end point molecular end point so then uh, if positive result it is uh, regarded that sufficient evidence is embryonic toxicity if it is positive is there so automatically at the stage itself we can able to avoid the okay able to avoid the uh, these drugs because especially in the if it may be producing the some embryonic toxicity or it may be reproductive toxicity so chemical as likely hazard to development of the reproduction that is the reason we are going to consider at the basic level itself without using the animals so along with that some of the cell lines also we can able to use it so that is a uh, ncf7 that is used for the breast cancer hl60 used for the leukemia hek293 used for the embryonic kidney cells and hela used for the uh, henrita lax so what is mean by henrita lax so here generally hela cells hela cells were going to call it as so then generally the hela is nothing but it is a one of the patient which uh, having this uh, generally whatever the cell lines or cell cultures were going to collect it generally the, which is going to use to die after some time but here that uh, hela which are going to henrita henrita and uh, henrita lax so that means uh, the henrita is one of the uh, cells we are going to used for the uh, evaluation of the cancers evaluation of the cancers especially from the skin region so that is skin cancers so here these cells which can able to undergoing into the more uh, propagation within uh, uh, 15 to 20 days so generally all the cells are going to after some time which are going to die but these cells which can able to proliferate you every 15 to 20 days so that patient cannot be able to treat with the several drugs so that is the reason after that uh, the cell lines as are uh, taken from them and that are going to using for the various uh, various cancer 
studies nowadays so the name they named as he means uh, the first uh, two letters of their uh, initial name uh, name as well as uh, la means that is the uh, middle name of their uh, uh, patient they are collected and finally they named as hela cells hela cells so generally this will be used for the determination of cancer so uh, along with that they are going to collecting in the, from the pre made cell lines also like uh, viro that is a uh, green monkeys which are going to collecting from the green monkeys and that will be used for the determination of kidney epithelial cells that is especially uh, uh, nephrotoxicity cos7 also we are going to use for the kidney uh, and another cells we are going to using from the hamster cho and sf9 sf21 to from the insect cells also these and all we are going to using for the several uh, infections and the other uh, chronic diseases so but uh, generally when you are going to looking into the in vitro but uh, there are several advantages and several disadvantages so in in vitro studies we can able to use the small quantity of test substances required and the another one is a uh, uh, advantage the experiment is under controlled conditions based on our uh, uh, environmental conditions there may be a possibility of uh, some experimental errors are possible and uh, that is the reason uh, only that uh, under controlled condition so we can able to rectify it without using the animals and results is obtained very quickly the time uh, less consuming no major infrastructure is required for these studies so then various disadvantages so dose response is not available but uh, now it has been converted into that uh, advantages based on that uh, the dose uh, survivability we have sir dilution procedures so then no systemic effect is studied because uh, if that effect may uh, whatever the cells are going to taking it is going to produce the positive effect but is may toxic to the any other organs that also organ organ specific uh, specificity also which is lacking chronic and long term effect could not be studied because uh, within, we are going to getting the responses within a short term then the transportation of material is not easy because it may be contaminated so then the applications of the uh, in vitro test that is uh, we can able to determine the genetic damage by using the some uh, amis test like that then another one is a uh, chromosomal abrasion test also we can able to direct uh, genotoxicity we can able to directly we can able to determining by the in vitro test and the another one is a uh, pomet uh, studies also like uh, gel electrophoresis we are going to getting this uh, directly the toxicity on the genes and in vitro pharmacology activity testing wherever which is required we can able to use it so that uh, we can able to reduce the uses of the animals and in vitro drug disposition studies and metabolic stability studies also so then the another one is uh, the replacement related so where we are going to discussing about the replacement so instead of using the large number of animals we can able to use some of the in silico techniques so that that is computer modeling techniques so that which can able to reduce the uses of the animals or we can complete we are going to replacing that is absolute replacing of the animals absolute replacing of the animals absolute replacing of the animals so by using the various uh, computer aided molecular drug design that is uh, another one is a uh, quantitative structure activity relationship then another one is a uh, computer assisted learning for uh, uh, uz programming and another one is computer or mathematical analysis it is assuming method argon on chips so we are going to converting into the chips so that uh, we can able to place it and we can able to assess the response based on their uh, uh, some in vitro cells so computer aided drug design so when you are going to looking into the diagram uh, or uh, so here we are going first uh, uh, virtual screening so based on the various uh, disease conditions or the either may be existing drugs existing drugs and we are going for the virtual screening by various logarithmic methods and post analysis and uh, mechanical stimulations and drafting finally we are going to getting into the experimentation 
after that we can able to go for the uh, by avoiding the pre clinical evaluation directly we can able to entering into the clinical trials for various approved drugs so how we can able to uh, study these methods so then here we are going to identifying the certain uh, uh, receptor binding sites and the followed by some 3d molecules and we are going to entering into the computer based and uh, designing so automatically when uh, that particular molecule if binds to the specific area automatically what are the changes which are going to takes place in the uh, uh, physiological organs or it may be their functioning or it may be a structure so instead of functioning majorly we are going to identifying the structure if structure alters automatically the uh, structure alters automatically the function may alters so that is the reason so by computer aided drug design we can able to predict the certain extension of effect on the receptor binding site and the potential drug molecule so it is uh, the, we can able to identify the probable binding as well as other uh, unwanted chemicals can able to uh, identify it and which is toxic and meantime we also by uh, identifying the if the drug molecules doesn't have any biological activity that also can able to identify it by using the computer aided drug design methods and then these methods can able to discover or develop or analyze the drugs but not at the clinical level only the pre clinical other uh, uses of the animals we can able to uh, replace it so by using the computer aided drug design so computer assisted learning so whatever uh, the learning so during learning so we are going to use the large number of animals for uh, uh, graduation or it may be the post graduation but uh, we can able to use some real experimental tools and the computer designing will be takes place and generally that will be used for the uh, uh, learning purpose so that we can able to reduce the large uh, usage of the numbers completely it is replaced so that we can able to say not reduction it is a complete replacement and we can able to gain the knowledge and meantime we can the cost effectiveness also which are going to reduce so generally in india there are two softwares are available for computer assisted learning that is the one xpam and another one is the xkazi pro so what we are doing nowadays so in our lab even uh, the uh, b farm or farm students so they are going to learning their experimentation by using this methods only so this already we know quantitative structural activity relationship uh, so so based on that uh, quantitatively as well as the qualitatively we can able to go for the various uh, high throughput screening and we can able to determine its uh, chemical properties of a compound and is there any structural similarity so we can able to assess the how uh, can able to assess the either that uh, which is having the similar biological effect or similar chemical effect or either it may be a similar toxicity effect also we can able to determine if by studying the uh, toxicological chemistry so here uh, computer mathematical analysis that is uh, based on the assuming only uh, we cannot able to say it is 100% correct but there is a possibility so computer design the molecular structure of drugs to target specific receptor especially the protease inhibitors are designed by computers tested in the tissue culture as well as the uh, before bypassing the animal test so these inhibitors are directly they are identified by this computer or in maybe mathematical analysis one of the example i was given so organ on chips so uh, uh, organ on chips is nothing but it is a state of the heart so that means uh, uh, one example i can able to give it uh, like uh, artificial pacemaker artificial pacemaker so then uh, this artificial pacemaker when you are going to use it and which can able to release these specific signals or the specific uh, electrical signals with a minimized quantity so that even though the sa node is a uh, fails to work and automatically the remaining heart also which may not able to work and which is works very less efficiently that will be uh, uh, using by like this organ on chips so that uh, most of the organs which are going to comes into the normal working whenever the electrical signals not by the chemical signals 
so but uh, when the electrical signals are there automatically the chemicals also which are going to released into the body and which can able to work there as like a normal conditions <coughs> this can be used to instead of animals especially directly we can able also working on to the disease research especially it is one of the emerging area uh, the diseased patients or diseased pers diseased animals who are going to collect it and that who are going to making the specific organs is and we are going to insert it into the body and automatically the physiological functions are going to comes into the normal whenever the disease is occurs so this is a microfluidic chips and we are going to use the very less quantity of the fluid we are going to incorporate into the chips and whenever it requires and automatically it's going to release into the body and which are going to producing the some feedback information by the computer analysis so already some of the uh, most of the functions of the body are either in the animals or in the humans then uh, positive and negative feedback systems which are going to regulating the various functions so whenever it fails to work these uh, feedback systems so we can able to use this uh, type of uh, chips uh, and which can able to produce the uh, different functions in the body especially for the uh, drug metabolic process as well as the disease conditions so generally the chips which are going to connecting into the different organs by electrical signaling process and automatically it's going to increasing the uh, response or which are going to increase the release of the neurotransmitters or maybe some hormones whenever it is excessive automatically it's going to stops by the electrical signaling system uh, that is we're going to call it as uh, biological sensors we're going to call it as biological sensors artificial biological sensors so here in the uh, image i was shown that is the anxiety and automatically sometimes uh, the animal uh, may moves into the more and that it may be sometimes due to the fear and immobility will be takes place and automatically uh, if there is a anxiety which is related to the neurotransmitters and that is especially uh, mono amino oxidase and uh, catechol o methyl transferase so then uh, based on that uh, if there is a increasing so then uh, automatically which may leads to the anxiety that will be inhibited or decrease the release of the particular neurotransmitters by microfluidic chips but uh, it is more cost effective as a biological sensor so then uh, the another one is uh, generally this test uh, the head cam test will be used for the used for the uh, various uh, allergic reactions so uh, the skin allergy related so here uh, we are going to using the fresh fertile white uh, uh, leg horn eggs are going to use it and then uh, we are going to use this uh, we are going to optim optimize the incubation condition on uh, day 10 we are going to the inner egg membrane is removed that is uh, the inner egg membrane will be removed after careful removal of the living vascular coriolanthic membrane is expressed so that means generally which may contain some uh, uh, coriolanthic membrane will be there and this membrane which is consist of the several blood vessels and all so then uh, the which cannot able to visible to us and this test substance is uh, dropped whatever the test substance is there we have to drop it on the particular uh, egg so then uh, uh, the volumes of 0.2 ml 0.3 ml and irrigated for 20 seconds so only you have to mix it so then uh, uh, with 5 ml of warm water so then uh, the blood vessels including capillary system albumin are examined scored under irritant effects at 0.5 minutes and 2 minutes as well as the 5 minutes after test compound of application so the scores can able to uh, identify either it may be hemorrhagic that means uh, internally it may lead to some bleeding or it may be coagulated so based on that we are going to uh, scoring scheme will be there so that is a uh, if it is a hemorrhage means minor means one moderate means three and uh, higher means five we are going to give it then coagulation also that is uh, how it is coagulated if it is coagulated if it is non-coagulated if it is coagulated the mild means five then moderate means seven major means uh, uh, higher or severe means nine like that we are going to get. as per the scheme to 22 classification the cumulative score irritation 
which may comes under the assessment who can able to comes into the if it is a up to 0.9 we are below one we are going to consider as practically none it doesn't have any irritant effect so whereas whereas one to four point nine it is a slight and the five to eight point nine that is so we are going to consider as moderate if it is nine and above we are going to consider as strong irritant effect so such compounds we can able to avoid before entering into the uh, dermatoxicity testing in the animals so this is my presentation so uh, i acknowledge to my heartfelt thanks to the management of uh, srk foundation the principal of physio institute of pharmaceutical sciences for women for providing me this uh, wonderful opportunity to present this uh, topic on this uh, particular two days webinar so any queries please ask me so these are the possible methods are there without using the animals these of the uh, test we can able to perform without using the animal so that uh, we can able to uh, uh, identifying the various uh, experimental procedures mm -hmm. as well as uh, the toxicological procedures okay. Okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for your wonderful presentation on alternative to the animal toxicity testing. Hope after this talk, all the students and faculty members can initiate to use the use the alternative methods to the animal testing and reduce the laboratory animal testing usage. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Principal Madam and IQAC, BAPW, I would like to appreciate your active participation and organize this webinar in combination of Department of Pharmacology and Pharmacognosy. Thank you, sir, for your contribution to this webinar. Now it's time to in this two days virtual webinar, virtual conference, now I request Dr. Vani Madam end the session with vote of thanks. Good afternoon, one and all. I myself, Dr. Vani. Professor, Department of Pharmacognosy, Asia Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences for Women. I feel privileged to express vote of thanks on this auspicious occasion of two-day national webinar on recent horizons in experimental pharmacology and molecular biology. Before that, I would like to present the winners of yesterday's presentations. From the Department of Pharmacognosy, Phytochemistry, and Pharmacology. First prize goes to G. Navyata from 4th B form for the topic The Role of Artificial Intelligence in Pharmacology Research and Practice. Second winner is P. Namrata from 4th B form C, who has presented. Drug repurposing and emerging approach in drug discovery. The third winner is Ms. M. Bhavana from 4th B Pharmacy for the topic Iriodictyol Overview and Biological Activities. The winners from the Department of Pharmacy Practice first prize goes to Ms. G. Megana from third form D for her topic on drug discovery and overview. The second winner is 
Ms. K. Mahalakshmi from Fifth Form B, who presented recent trends in drug discovery with a special emphasis on experimental pharmacology. The third winner is Ms. P. Kalyani from Fourth B Form, who presented the impact of genetically modified food on human health. I hope we all have spent a wonderful time. We enriched ourselves, enlightened, and boosted ourselves with diverse topics on experimental pharmacology and molecular biology. We thank you all for your graceful presence in the event. More than 300 delegates have attended this program. We thank management, principal madam, without whose effort this event cannot be conducted, organizers, members, volunteers, faculty members from different institutions, delegate students from various other institutions who have contributed to the grand success of this event. The event has been planned to provide fundamental and key principles of experimental pharmacology and molecular biology, along with recent developments, which will be helpful in the process of drug discovery and development. I express my appreciation to our distinguished speakers who have taken time out of their busy schedule to grace this occasion. A special thanks goes to the first day of our first day of our program, the speaker, Dr. Shabri Natsar, who has given an insight on cells of immune system, receptor signaling pathways related to inflammation, inflammation and related disorders. I extend my thanks to Dr. Tripathi sir from Siksha Anusandhan University, who has spoken on nootropic screening methods and various screening methods of CNS drugs. Myself, Dr. Vani, have delivered on techniques of molecular biology and natural products as bioactive molecules along with their molecular mechanisms. The day two session started with Dr. A. Sai Balaji, sir, scientist from CSIR IACT Hyderabad, who enlightened us on cancer physiology and molecular mechanisms of anti cancer drugs. He spoke about various treatment modalities, chemotherapy, screening models, and he expressed various career opportunities in the field of pharmacy. The session followed by Mr. Kartike Reddy, manager, Cognizant Technologies who spoke on the scope of pharmacovigilance, the necessity of certificate courses, the future prospects. And at the end, Dr. and Mr. A. Jairam Reddy, sir, spoke about alternatives to animal toxicity testing, where the usage of animals can be reduced by utilizing cell lines. Thank you, sir, for your delegate lectures who have really boosted our knowledge. I would like to say every each and every person who have contributed to this conference and made it a grand success. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Principal Madam, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you once again. Okay. Thank 
I'm 